All right, guys, I am on a delay. We're trying to give the players a few minutes to check in here that have not checked in. We want our... All right, guys. <laughs> we have spirit playing. That's the crazy thing. Let's see. I'm giving them time for check-ins. Bang's playing. Let's fucking go. I should... Gotta move Cuckoo and Patty Mac up. Patty Mac's playing, hell yeah. Nice signed up, but nice is not. I don't have nice's contact. Holy shit, 50 players signed up and that gazillion no check-ins. Some people signed up later and I don't think they know how to check in. All right, let's see here. Because there's a lot of people that are not on there. Let me see. Vanessa is playing. Let's make sure he's checked in because I know he's here. Yep. Good job. Graphy is he playing? Back in. All right. All right, I got to do a coin flip. What up, guys? How you doing, fisherman? How you guys doing? Sorry, I'm seeding and shit, but we're going to... All 
Well, we have a lot of no checking, so you know what? We're just going to go with it. I'm marking Graf check then because he's probably going to play. Who the fuck is Griff? All right. I'm doing the coin flip for Jumi. Please give me good bracket. Well, let's see. For Jumi is. Uh, against. Where are you against, buddy? Winter of Flexi and Night Phoenix. That sounds good. Uh, but I'm actually going to process check-ins. Okay, coin flip. Right, hang on. Green Ultralisk says ABC and D moved. Ha ha, Dave, you can't escape. One sec. Heads. WCW. LCWC. And it is okay. I'm going to see who I get for my first victims. What up, Green? What up, guys? I really am, don't care about the command. We have a 90 second delay, the delay commands, whatever. All right, so I got to get this rolling. We are good to go. So whoever didn't make it, didn't make it. Bracket's going to be scuffed if triggered. Trigger? Yeah, he did. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, some have some unlucky brackets. We have a pretty stacked tournament. There's 34 people playing. We have Bang versus Bioise. Um, I want to see if Bang's here. We have a pretty stacked tournament. We're going to start off with Patty back versus for Jumi. <laughs> for Jumi versus Patty Mac. 
Well, you fuck me, I fuck you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Mr. Green. No, I just, uh... I don't know. It's uh, early for Dave. I'm still waking up, even though... I've been up for a bit. All right. So we got who we got. Bang. Giddy up. Bang. Thanks for the foul lactic milkman. Lacty milkman. Thank you. Thank you. I need to check my phone. <laughs> All right, guys, when is bracket final? No, fuck. All right, now we're live. Sorry, guys. Okay. Some people got unlucky brackets and are forfeiting. Let me see here. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Mio Micah versus Patty Mac. No, I need to fix my sleep schedules why I went to sleep earlier. We are a little late. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so we have a walkover. <clears throat> Trell versus Eric. Quanta, Trifax versus... People are going to be mad. I had some mistakes. Bang versus Vindicta. People are going to be pissed. Bruh. As per usual, I scuff something. I made a few mistakes, but we're all right. This do be a bit of a pain. I'd like to... I have no lobby links. Quanta versus Jaubeck. Okay, I'm going to do Quanta versus Yomik. Tater, tutor, Professor Nuggy, bang, uh. Oh, I'm gonna turn on the bot. Sibber John says Dave Lester? No? Oh. Dave Chester? No? Oh. Dave Tester? Oh boy, Sibber John coming in with the TTS. Is the bester? Sue Machiola Fester. Love. Alright, sorry, we're getting this going. Alright, I got Geralt, fine.
Okay. All right, so it is Geralt versus Eric. Oh, sick. This is going to be a banger. Geralt versus Eric. We got our boy Trigger signed up. We got Migs signed up. I wanted to get Migs, and it, I'm sure people are going to bitch because I fucked up like usual. But this was more, uh, more or less because we had so many signups at the last second. Whoops. Let me move this over here. All right, guys. Here we go. You're sober. You thought it would start in 40 minutes. Well, yeah, you did mention you were going to be drinking or something. All right, anyway, here we go with our first match. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Neo Humanity. In the blue, give it up for Geralt. And his opponent in the upper left, representing the Cranky Ducklings. Give it up for Eric. In the red. Little PVZ to start things off. No mere matchups. I was I was excited for Four Jumi and Patty Mac. We have Mape the Eight Point. We have all sorts of people. I'm very thankful Vindictus playing. But, uh, we have Spirit playing as our highest ranking player, I believe. These guys are no slouches. Let's see here. It is a tool first from Eric going full balls to the wall. Uh, it looks like a 14 pool, actually. Proxy hatch? Let's go! We got a proxy hatch game. Is he going to go over here? That's the question. I think he is. I wonder if Geralt's going to get a read on this. Let's go. We need to turn off TTS. True, I am going to turn off TTS. Unless it's for dollar redos. Oh, no. He's not going to do that. I thought he was going to mine over there. Geralt scouts for... The He's so used to getting proxy hatch sometimes, I swear. Geralt gets a lot of time. <laughs> He gets proxy hatch more than most uh most of the players. I'm kind of like a combination of George, Kramer, and Jerry, all right? All right, Drew. Let's be real. If we're being honest here. It's well, realistically. Haha, <laughs> Dark Omega I did turn off TTS. All right, so TTS is disabled now. That is a good point. Anyway, Got a little chase down here. As per usual, I fuck everything up on the beginning, and that's fine. Because we're used to it. Okay, so it is just a double gate forge opener from Geralt. Kind of a scuffed wall, to say the least, though. So you, this is going to take a stalker to fill it. We do have Lings coming across the map. Geralt trying to get into the choke, but he's going to have a full surround. All right, this is a little awkward. Okay, now he's going to go back to the battery. It's a lot of lings. And Metabolic Boost is on the way. Queen's trying to get out. Two Stalkers going to do a lot of DPS to the hatch. But they are in jeopardy of being surrounded. Shield Battery is going to help out. And Geralt's not worried about expanding just yet. Eric is taking another hatch behind us. And we do have a third Stalker coming. So it is a double gas from Geralt. Building another pylon back at home. We got a little dance of the lings. The queen, I think, is going to pop, however. And Geralt does get a nexus behind us. Though quite a bit late. Still at the same time when we're looking at the units. I think this is going all right. We're just now getting warp gate started. The queen is going to drop a creep tumor, I'm sure of it. Yep. And we will have some more lings out. Oh. Oh, that was actually a good maneuver from Eric. Eric coming in hot. Let us see how this plays out. That's a lot of lings. And metabolic boost finishing in a second. It's a little rough timing. For Geralt, oh, just before this finishes, the probe makes its way back home. Very good stuff. Stalker's being careful. We just need to get a snipe. Oh, it's so close. The hatch is down to seven health. It is regenning. Oh, Geralt getting surrounded. All well, these stalkers are going to help chisel away at some of these zerglings, but that battery is not going to be enough. The zealot is trapped. The stalker's in jeopardy. These adepts can't come out soon enough. Can Geralt hold? He's hoping for this Nexus to come for battery overcharge, but guess what? Oh, it's so close to finishing. Come on, Geralt, snipe it. He's going to need to snipe this. Funnily enough, two Adepts are going to be pretty helpful here, but they could snipe the hatch. They're trying to. They're trying desperately. Second battery finishes, but two Stalkers have fallen. 
This is a spicy game. Eric's just droning up behind. Look at this. He's macroing behind it. Geralt did manage to get his hat, and he is as well. He's got an oracle coming. Going for the standard Stargate opener at a really scuffed time because of this. Does Geralt get the kill? Finally, he does. And so ends the proxy hatch. Eric is getting more gas, but he is supply block for a moment. Uh, going into a Roach Warren. Pretty typical Zerg follow-up. And the Queen's over here. Still spread and creep. I actually like the pathing of the creep spread. But we're now going to have another creep tumor. Oracle's going to try to go get some value on the other side. It is a couple queens back home. Three queens. Spore's just now going down. The Oracle's going to go straight in. But we'll have to be careful of the queens. Third hatch going down. Actually, it's technically the fourth hatch going down. Uh, yeah, this is pretty crazy. Shit of pillars, exactly. Shit of pillars, ran. They're going to turn into shit moths. I do have the commands enabled and whatever. I think all the gifts are on, but I prefer if we don't use them, but we'll see. Should probably turn that shit off. All right, oracles are going to get stuck in a slow field. Geralt smartly cheeking his way out here, but guess what? There's cream spread everywhere. The whole oracles are going to see that the queen's out spreading creep still. This is four adepts, though. However, the... Uh, oof. The probe does fall. And this is going to be a nice little ling run by for Eric. So what Geralt did cheekily to get out did expose him for a minute for a ling run by. However, the lings are going to be surrounded. A couple are going to survive. With a lot of damage, force a lot of lost mining time. And, and uh, a couple probes are going to fall. Still, that could have... Could have went a lot worse for Geralt, though. Ultimately, three workers going down is not bad for how many lings that was. So a bit of missed micro from Eric. All right. We do have an observer coming out in plus one. We're just now getting a Twilight Council. Kind of a spicy game to warm everything up with. How you doing, Zero Blast? And everyone, Rigatron. Fisherman. Professor Nuggy Drew. All the gang. Uh, let's see here. Just making sure we're good on everything. Alright, there's going to be an Overlord popping over here. The Stalker may be able to get it. And Geralt has to clean up all this creep spread. Wheel Reconstitution, Melee, and Carapace coming down for Eric. Who's actually pretty even on workers. Geralt is trying to get his third base up. It's going to be a little exposed. He does have a shield battery there. Oracles uh, may or may not have seen those roaches. But Geralt's just trying to clean up this creep spread and get some value on the other side of the map. He, oh, it looks like three oracles will find a good amount of damage on this side of the mineral line. Uh, if it wasn't for that one oracle being so damaged and all the energy being used, he could have sniped that queen. Uh, five drones going down for not losing an oracle. Pretty good, but this is a lot of roaches and three queens. Still, creep tumor survived for a little bit of a queen walk. Ghost, how you doing? Guys, please use those Matcherino codes. We have some left. They are getting used up, and I'm very thankful for that. The players are going to be more thankful for that. So a lot of Stalkers and Adepts. Plus one ground weapon is going to finish for Draw ahead. But guess what? 1-1 one, one going to finish for our Zerg player. This is a scary army. 72-40 to 40 army supply. Oh, the shield batteries fall at an instant to all these Ravagers. Pretty crazy game. What's this? Geralt with a Void Ray. This is a scuffed army, but double disruptors are on their way. Couldn't come soon enough, uh, as well as Blink. This is a scary Zerg army. The Carapace is going to help out even with the Lings, of course. Uh, and the Adept's kind of shading over to the side. They are going to finish disjoining the Zerg army for a second. Geralt does have a third base. The Photon Cannon to buy time is going to be nice. One of the disruptors pop, and Geralt is going to need this. This is a two-prong attack from Eric. Eric with the spicy plays. Okay, Disruptor does zone back. But these are the only two. Uh, but these gates are going to fall. Geralt is down to four gates. And a massive Zerg army at his doorstep. Geralt is able to get more units out. And Blink is coming in 12 seconds again. It couldn't come soon enough. These stalkers... Oh my gosh, these vials doing work. Killing a Void Ray. As well as a couple stalkers. 
Does the Nova get any... Oh, Nova does not catch anything. Very unluckily. However, another Nova is going to come out and doesn't even get the Lings. Nice micro from Eric. Oh, poor Geralt getting bullied over here. Nexus looks like it is going to fall. And yeah. This is pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, guys, it was funny. Maples were saying, geez, this is more... St Some of the guys were like, this is more stack uh, than DreamHack qualifiers this week. We had 54 players sign up today. That's actually pretty crack. And this is a hold from Geralt. To say the least, he ends up a little bit ahead other than losing the Nexus in terms of army, but losing the Nexus is pretty big. Let's take a look at the losses. Still more in favor of Geralt. However, Eric is getting a fourth hatch and then actually completed behind this. So Geralt losing that third base is rough, but he's continuing his upgrades going into extended thermal lens, double colossi coming. Or do we still have the disruptors? That's what I want to know. No, everything fell. The dis that was actually pretty extensive a loss for Geralt. So he's mostly on gateway units going to be stuck onto Colossi, which I like Colossi, but at the same time, against Roach Ravager, you certainly want some disruptors, unless they're in fewer numbers. And truthfully, I don't think it's looking as bad for Geralt as it would appear. Uh, with that said, yeah, Eric has been pumping out mostly army supply. He is going to build more drones. Geralt leading on workers for the moment, but... Because uh, it's a very aggressive Zerg play. Oh, Colossi are going to zone this back a bit. And the Disruptor's going around the side, hoping to get a cheeky blindsided Eric. What a banger of a game, number one. Our first series of the day on my covering, anyway. I do have a Russian caster. Indy may be covering in Polish. Indy Starcraft. Uh, Flapjack may be joining me. We'll see. Nice little Ling Scout from Eric. He's going to see the uh, third base is done. Draw it going for a fourth. I do like that. Adrenal glands popping, though, and an Ultra Cavern. That's a little scary. Draw is continuing his upgrades. Eric, not so much. So, in the meantime, it's a lot of links. We don't have any Stormy Boys, but uh, Temple Archives is going down for Geralt. This is a crazy game. All right. And so many good uh, sides of the cover. I wish we had some more casters today. Chicken Man was unavailable. Oh my goodness. Colossi is going to fall and oof. Let's see what happens from here. <laughs> wow, this is a lot of roaches falling. You're all getting. This is just plus two. But that was a very good fight. Uh, army supplies looking pretty even at the moment. And uh, yeah. Ooh, nice abducts from Eric. Clean it up to Colossi, almost killing the other. The other will fall. It is pure Roach that it's fighting, which is unlucky for Geralt. So Geralt's losing a lot of his army. It's basically just Stalker. Some more Disruptors coming behind us. We do have Storm, and plus three is a ticking. These Stalkers are pretty injured. Eric is going to disengage. However, Geralt is starting to saturate his fourth base. He's insanely ahead on workers, though. So the longer this goes on, Eric's trying to get drones out. Geralt did pick off a bunch, which there's so few drones for being 14 minutes in the game. Uh, Eric is going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. Going into, is that plus three chitinous carapace or chitinous plating? I believe that is probably chitinous. Very strange uh, army comp change for... Eric, okay, nice save for with the recall for Geralt. Uh, and this is going to be a very endangered third base for Geralt. 
Battery overcharge trying to hold it down, but it is going to be sniped. At the same time, nice. Oh, we do have our first really decent connect for Anova, and it still was not, like, the biggest. Uh, looks like we had some blinding clouds landed, but they were disengaged. Oh, nice Nova again. Three roaches getting cleaned up, but these four disruptors are in trouble. Oh, no, that bile. No, no. it's luckily just one bile. Stalker's going to clean the rest of these roaches and ravagers up lings. Kind of cheekily on the sideline. Geralt double expanding, by the way. And Eric just at 51 drones. He does have a couple or, uh, Ultra the Scout, and it is kite in his plating. Pretty crazy games. Pretty crazy games so far. Um, this is a banger. Charge Light going to go take out that Ling on the sideline. We do have a big group of Zerglings. Pushing on out around here. Well, funnily enough, they just run by Zealots, and this base is now in trouble. However, speaking of bases in trouble, these disruptors are going to go down. And oh my gosh, look at the blinding clouds and the stalkers. What a clown fiesta. Where's the, where are the Zealots? Oh, the Zealots are engaging in Ultralisk. And this base looks like it's in a lot of trouble for Geralt. Geralt down in army supply. Eric kind of eat eking his way through this game still. Not getting more upgrades. He was on ranged attack. No, it was melee and carapace. No ranged attacks, even though he had so many roaches and ravagers earlier. But now, he does have a good amount of ultras. Okay, it is double immortal production for Geralt. He might want to get some stormy buys, boys, for the lings, though. Or even some archons with this army. I wouldn't hate that. I mean, Archons are not the greatest against Ultras, but they're a little better. Like Stalkers and Archons, and he has a couple of Immortals. Actually, more Immortals coming in. We do have a Mothership. Viper or not, a Mothership actually would be good if it can get out. Okay, we do have some Zoning Storms, but they don't really do much other than chisel at the Stalkers. Nice Roach run wide from Eric, by the way. It's now 48 to 64 workers. That fifth base did fall. The Ling run by. I think Geralt should have just... Engaged the Lings and bought time back there. Uh, but there was a fight on the left flank as well. Oh, these Stalkers. We're surrounded. Are going to go down? Uh, nice Disruptor. Shot from Geralt. And there's so many Lings over here. It's basically just Stalkers fighting them, which do okay-ish. Okay, now there's some Zealots. And the Nexus will survive for now. That said, I don't know about this side. There's going to be a couple gates going down. And, well, Roaches and Ultralisk are going to have to respect these four Immortals, however. This game is uh got to be certainly frustrating for Geralt from how it started. Let's see how many Nexi fell. This is three Nexi so far, and this one looks like it is in trouble. Battery Overcharge is going to try to hold this. Uh, probes now going to be starting to be healed, but, the, but it was a debate. Still, the Lings are going to fall. Eric going to reposture and go from the other angle again. No, where is he going to go? Another Ling run by to the third. This is certainly scrappy. All right. And Chicken Man was busy today. I forgot to hit up low, but I don't. He's usually not around at this time. We could get him in if he wants to cover some stuff. Oh, shoot. This is looking rough for Geralt. He's going into ground armor plus one. He has shields plus two. And Mama Ship is out. Yeah, another link run by over here. The photon cannon's a thing of the past. I like the Zealot Warping. Ger uh, Geralt's anticipating the attack. Eric is doing a good job of letting himself get uh, close to the worker count, but... Geralt hope, is hoping to catch this base. All right, we do have some Zealots and Stalkers going to clean up these lings on this side. But Eric is trying to cheek out a fifth base, which did take some pressure from some Zealots before. Okay, there's a good amount of, of uh, Zealots from Geralt. He saw the army over here. There's some Stalkers. Geralt's got to get some momentum on the other side of the map somehow and retain this. We do have some uh, Zealots and Archons forming over there. That should take care of it. The Archons were a good choice. As long as if Eric hit earlier, they could have went down. 
But this fifth base looks in jeopardy. And guess what? Four or overseers are going to be warped in. But weren't quite ready just yet. Nice recall from Draw, but he misses the High Templar. That's a bit scary. Still, there's some big attacks coming on the other side. And Geralt's going to try to make his way over here, but this army is just not keeping up. It's not even much of an army. Zealot Warpin is going to help try to keep the base alive. And the Archon and the Immortals. Oh, no, the Archon's chasing this group of roaches. It's a lot of roaches. A spire coming down for Eric. What a scrappy game. Let's heck it go. Oh, no, Mothership's not moved in time. Storm's going to zone this back. Vipers do have pretty much full energy. And uh, Battery Overcharge is going to hold this side for Geralt. Eric still on these four bases. He did lose the fifth. He's down to four. It's 41 to 50 workers 20 minutes into the game. Uh, Saffron could, uh, if he's around, he'd be more. I would not mind. He can uh, do a little side cast. I uh, messaged Gamer Richie if he wanted to and uh, Feral. This would like, uh, you know, we have so many players, it's a shame it's not all being covered. I wasn't expecting this many people to sign up. GG. Geralt takes it, and what a banger. This is a rough time for Sephron in Australia, though. I'm not going to lie. That's why I kind of was like, well... <laughs> Geralt just messaged me, what the fuck is this game? <laughs> or what the fuck this game? <laughs> How are you guys doing? What up, Gene Sim? All right, here we go. All right, he's up a point and thoroughly confused after the first game, spawning in the upper right-hand corner of Royal Blood in the blue. Give it up for Geralt. And his opponent in the bottom left in the red, representing Cranky Ducklings, it is Eric. Geralt, of course, ah. from Storm Gaming. Oh boy, I gotta get rid of the sound for predictions. I forgot I was gonna make a ding, but I really don't. I think I might just get rid of the bot for now. Bot is closed. All right, it's gonna be not a pull first. So Geralt going for a hatch block. He's gonna scout that it's looking pretty standard so far, or is it? Ah, Geralt's chasing the drone, Eric. May just be debating him. Nope, he's going to go for this. is a pool first. So it is a 16 pool, I think. And I didn't cover Bang's game. Jeez. A Banga. All right, this is going to be a hatch block in the wall. Oh, very frustrating game, too. Draw going for a forge this time. He knows what's up. I don't hate the forge in this case. It is going to get a core, and I do like the fact that there is another pylon going down on the forge side. I think you could cheek out a cannon, even though it doesn't help in the foreground. All right, Eric going right into a roach warren. A little bit of blight going on here. What up, Bad Manor? A bunch of swear words, life's a baller, as we would not have it any other way on the Dave stream. Probably should watch that a little bit. Photon Cannon going down is going to put an end to this. However, the Roaches are going to be a bit of a problem as a follow-up. There is no Metabolic Boost, and there is only one gas, uh, so there's probably not going to be any Metabolic Boost. Shield Battery is probably going to want to go down for Geralt. 
And, but as they say, the roaches, I feel like, are going to be a bit more of a problem. Eric should probably consider canceling the hatch, but you know what? The broodlings are going to be a bit of a problem, too. Shield battery went down a little late. Roach coming down. Uh, this is going to be tough for Geralt. Another photon go cannon going down, and unfortunately, these are powered by one pylon on this side. But it kind of needs to go down there. So a bit unlucky. Shield battery will complete. Rochi boys coming out and Adept's coming. Oh man, this is looking brutal. Uh, Stalker is probably about as good a follow-up as you can get. Nexus will be helpful, but we don't have anything else for production because all the pylons are over here. Shield battery coming in clutch, but is getting drained. Nexus won't be up in time. Photon cannon getting corrosive bile, but these are just two ravagers right now. Oh, there is a Roach with it. The Adept, nice micro from Geralt. Geralt chasing a roach away, distracting the Ravagers. Adept and Stalker putting pressure on the other Ravager. Oh, the roach does pop. That was damn close. Battery. Oh, battery overcharge is available. Geralt's trying to buy time not to use it. Corrosive Bile's hitting the forward-facing cannon. Uh, the Stalker is trying to do God's work, but is almost done. This is the only producing structure for Geralt, and it's in a lot of trouble. Battery overcharge. Gonna have to try to heal any of this. The cannon and the gate. He really needs the gate. Is trying to heal it. He's gonna try to juggle this. And with the battery overcharge uh, nerf in the patch, it is not gonna be able to heal both those structures. Greasy. How you doing, Blunder King? Uh, this is damn close, but... Yeah, it's only one gate. So the problem is there's nothing to really... There's only one stalker and probes. Geralt doing God's work with one stalker. The other stalker did help out quite a bit. Oh my gosh, nice cancel at the last second for Geralt. Geralt really wants to kill the one rev. He has overextended a little bit. Will this stalker survive? There's not much battery energy. One clean one did pop. And he is doing God's work with just a single stalker. Oh, nice micro at the end. These Ravagers are about dead. We do have a couple Queens coming out for Eric. Gerald did manage to get the second base, and he's been macroing. He does have a Stargate coming and a Void Raid to follow up. Gerald trying to chase down. Look at how close this is. Oh, no. Gerald ooh, does pay attention to the last second. I think he should have chased down the Ravager, honestly. This is hilarious. Another banger of Game 2. Eric delivering for the entertainment. Eric is going for a third edge behind this. Uh, trying to macro out of this, which is not easy for Zerg when you're that committed, but Geralt at the same time had some significant losses. Some really scrappy trades. Geralt now on Stargate Tech, but he is going to have a couple gates down eventually and be able to defend now for sure if anything was to follow up. It's going to be Carapace and Melee again from Eric. Put the state of the game in his own double Stargate from Geralt. Okay, this might actually catch Eric off guard. This would be a time where I wouldn't hate a Fleet Beacon going down in this game, for sure. Geralt was able to get that base up, and with the double gas saturation, I personally, I would not hate the uh, double carrier build against this. Oracle and Void Ray coming out on two different sides. Uh, Geralt is going to scout that the third hatch is taking a triangle uh, in not the 6 o'clock position base. All right, Oracle keeping the Queens busy. Voidray going to make its way in. Voidray should be going for the drones. Obviously not doing as much uh, DPS on drones as an Oracle, but unfortunately there are two Queens the greedy on the other's flank. They do make their way in. Oracle trying to get some kills. Is going to get a few. There's only two Queens in the hold. The Spore is going to finish, though, and Jarrell is going to take some significant hold damage. Not too bad, actually. Seven drones is quite worth. Eric is down. To 38 workers and Geralt wasn't paying attention does unfortunately eat a corrosive bile on that wood ray he's going for a third base and it is going to be carriers we are going into a layer but the carrier follow-up is pretty cheeky I like this it's going to be the double carrier build and that actually is probably going to end the game I would imagine because we have queens that have transfused there's only four we have no more queens in production for the moment uh, Geralt has some static defense here. Third base could be in jeopardy, but it doesn't really matter that much at this timing. Adept's going in to kill more drones. And there's just not a lot of economy for Eric. Eric does have a bit of a bank, but I don't think it's going to matter. 
49 to 47 workers. Uh, did we lose any more probes? Six probes have fallen this game at 13 drones. Geralt going with the Void Ray again, trying to be annoying. Keep his opponent busy and guessing. So all Eric really had for a scout after was the Lings on the third base. Carriers are going to be arriving right now. Plus one air weapons on the way. Two more carriers to follow. And the Adepts. Mm, I don't know if that's a tell to Eric, but he's just building Lings. And again, there's just a few queens out and some spores. That's it for any air defense. So these carriers could do some good work. <clears throat> And they are going to be on full interceptors by the time they make it across the map. This is going to be... Oh, I love the Oracle coming behind this, too. And the Queens are running for dear life, trying to retreat to the Spore. Void Ray starting to get a little bit of damage here to the Queen. Geralt's just going to throw the Void Ray, probably. He doesn't care. Nope, he's going to debate the Queen. The Queen's chasing the Void Ray. The Corrosive Bile is going to hit the Carrier. Well, it doesn't matter. Another queen falling. This is all the air defense. A spire and a hydra den going down, but uh, the hydra den could possibly finish, but not in time. Queen's fall, or overlords falling is well behind this. Actually, Geralt should just kill the overlords. There's so few of them, it's a supply block for Eric. Five overlords attempting to be made. And I think Geralt made the best move you could do, because there's no way Zerg's going to have <laughs> enough to... Uh, from what he scouted, even. And with the pressure at that. Oh, Crosis Bile almost kills one of the carriers. I like that he's attacking the Spire. Does get a kill, not a cancel. Eric's already looking pretty dead. He managed to get Overlords out, but unfortunately, most of them were from the natural. They are going to fall. Two more carriers going to attack the third base. And this is looking pretty... Pretty crazy. Eric managed to get a base over here, but the Void Ray snipe in this one. Carrier's attacking the third. Eric's desperately trying for a 1-1 uh, Ling run by, but I don't think that's going to do any game-ending damage. Geralt could lose, like, everything over there, and it doesn't matter. Ah, Geralt's getting some Zealots out, and one Carrier's going to try to hold this. More Zealots coming in to attack it. They're slow for now, but I think this game's pretty much decided. Though pretty cool. Uh, carriers are going to be in the line of spores, but spores getting out of range for a second. One carrier attacking each spore individually. Uh, but we do have plus one air weapons. Yeah, this is looking pretty over, but I hate to be that guy. I just don't see it. Hydra is in a prayer from Eric. That's what he's hoping for. Spore actually chiseling at these interceptors, though. Oh! We'd, ah, actually, the Hiders are able to jump on the carrier, and one carrier is going to go down. I guess that's about the only victory Eric can claim on that, as he's down to one hatchery. Stasis Ward looks like it is going to be out of range of the drones. And uh, Geralt holds his third base. So this is a one-base Zerg. Long-distance mining for days. Against a three, now four base, sorry, Protoss. Going in to charge a lot. Uh, High Templar. The, there's so few Hydras, I don't think it matters. The Rev Tag's going to help. Eric knows he's just going to try to get something done here. GG is called. And though he's eliminated in the first series, what a banger of them. Uh, uh, what a banger of games. That was... Uh... <laughs> Damn. Half an hour for the first series. But... Some extra cheesy opener for this. Very cool stuff. All right, let's see how the bracket's looking on the other side. We already have some people advancing, I'm sure. Uh, that was a long one. Okay, so we have Trigger 2-0 to Ender. Nickich versus Trigger. Patty Mac versus Aristori. Nickarak and you going on. Winner goes on the fight. Spacey Macy. Rattata versus Vindicta.
Guys, we're going to probably catch Rattata versus Vindicta. Oh. Oh, damn. We have a 1 0 for this one. I should probably cover another series, but. Uh... Rattata versus Vindicta. And Rattata is up 1 0. We have our NA GOAT parent player, Mr. Vindicta. Oh, man, I wanted some coffee, but fuck. All right. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that series. Poor Eric was eliminated, but he did deliver in terms of good entertainment. All right, here we go. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Gressven. In the blue, give it up for the Cranky Ducklings, Vindicta, Mr. Miggs himself. And his opponent in the upper left. Uh, can't remember what team Rotata's on now, but he has his old Good Game Gaming clan tags. It is Rotata in the red, because Good Game Gaming, unfortunately, just disbanded. I can't remember what team he is playing for now. I do believe he made it to a... Uh, was taken on by a team. Well, in fairness, Geralt made about the best decision he could there. Either way, if your cheese fails and you're that aggressive, you're basically done, but still uh, on a Zerg side, it's a very, very committed, pretty much all in. And uh, Geralt held about as good as he can with as little as he could. So that allowed him to keep the Nexus and economic. We get ahead and keeping his core means he could tech up. And that was just the right move. Still very good stuff. All right. So it's up to Migs to take this game and Gressvan. To advance. And Rattata, as we know, is a very... Very tough opponent. Rattata is a really underrated Zerg player, I feel like. And he's a pretty good, pretty good dude as well. So otherwise we have Nick Rack versus Spacey Macy going on. Spirit versus Maples. Maples is gonna kill me. For Jumi versus Exo Striker. That's a that's one we see quite often in these tournaments, or if not this, the cock of the walk. Uh, pretty cool stuff. And guys, please use those Matcherino codes. If any are in there, exclamation mark Matcherino. It'll, it'll add 25 cents just by clicking claim code. If they're all claimed, good job. Uh, but it adds 25 cents to the prize pool for the players, and they do appreciate that. All right, Reaper doing some good work, but Rattata doing a good job retaining the, uh, the Zerglings. However, yeah, Vindicta going to retain the Reaper, which is pretty good. He is delaying the third hatch, which is pretty nice. But it's going to be a Roach Warren play from Rattata. He's going for a Roach all in against Migs. Migs needs some information. Uh, but he is going to see there's no... He may be anticipating this. Let's take a look back here. Eh, going into Hellions. Oh, a little misplacement. Vindicta going to be in a bit of trouble, but more importantly than kidding any damage, he wants to scout this out, but still, it's the Lambo 9 Roach from Rattata, most, well, more or less. Vindicta is likely to lose this Reaper right here. Nope, he's going to keep it alive, but he's going to need everything. Oh, he doesn't get a block on the third. That would actually be pretty big. So Vindicta's got to do whatever he can to hold this. Uh, this is going to be rough. Hellion's coming out. It's no, like, build order counter from Vindicta. And f in fact, no tech lab is going to be rough. He's going to get a Viking. I guess a bunker buys him a little time, but these roaches are already pushing across the map. I guess he's going to get some counter harass, but... Damn, this could be very unlucky for Vindicta. Because I don't think he has the units to deal with this. 
is getting a tech lab out. And yeah, usually you need a cyclone. I mean, a siege tank could hit. It's all roaches at first. One Ravager is coming in, and the Viking is going to land to try to get some added DPS. Boys are pulled. He's going to try to get this Ravager at the least, but the Roaches are headbutting into the main base. Uh, damn, I wonder why he didn't get Widow. A Widow Mine wouldn't have been bad, or two Widow Mines, rather. But the boys are forced to be pulled. Uh, actually, the DPS with the Viking and the Marines does Vindicta hold. It looks like he is. He did lose a good amount of workers. Uh, actually, some are... Just idle, so he did lose a good amount of workers, but at the same time, with that said, he holds. Uh, losing eight workers is rough, but it is a hold. Tata coming in extra cheeky, going for more roaches, going for some more queens, but he does have a third hatch, so I don't think he's necessarily just going to push out just yet. Evo Chamber on the way as well. And does he have a lair? Uh, no, not at this point. So Vindicta did it. Uh, with everything he had, he did a good job of holding. Going into stem, I do like this. Getting a couple more racks, getting his third CC. He's just going to try to macro up. And, uh, well, Reaper going to go try to get a couple drones. Be annoying, kind of scouting some stuff, but is not going to be able to catch any. Just keeping some pressure on Hellions, trying to run by the Roaches. Basically, we're there for extra defense. Uh, in addition to the Queens for the Hellion run by and all these Hellions are going to be cleaned up. Unfortunately, Vindicta not able to get any work or damage. Did Hup already play? I think Hup was probably sleeping. I didn't see him check in, so unfortunately I don't think Hup was in there. Damn, I missed I missed uh, freaking Vindicta versus Bang. I wanted to catch that. I know we had a banger of a series, pun intended, but... Uh, I wanted to catch that so bad. All right, let's take a look here. Wow, Christiana actually spending time with his girlfriend. Instead of playing this, I'm proud of him. All right. I just wanted to throw that out there. I got a response. I'm like, no Christiana today. And that's why I was like, what a, what a Chad. Look at him being all responsible. Like Yuri, he was going to play. He's like, yo, I got to do this. All right. Viking. Yeah, trying to kill this overseer. We'll eventually be able to do so. The changeling is out, but that's scouted too. And, uh, well, it's going to be a big Zerg push. Vindicta doesn't have much, and he's kind of pushing out. It's going to be a bit of an anti-timing. The third base, oof, just landing is going to be a little rough for Vindicta. I think Rattata is just going to commit across the map, possibly. And it's not a... Mm, factory was on its reactor, too, for more Hellions. I don't know how much that... Oh, the Widow Mine's even going to be intercepted immediately. And Vindicta's just across the map. This could be over right now. I would have liked some siege tanks, but Vindictive stayed on reactor tech, possibly from how this was damaged. He's going to have to raise the gnat, too, but there's no wall right here either way. He's trying to get a lot of damage done on the other side of the map. Widowmine's coming in, actually attacking the queens, not the roaches. GG's called, and Rattata takes it. Playing extra cheesy. Very unlucky for Mr. Vindicta. A little bit of a build order counter. All right, guys, I need just a minute.
All right, let's see what we got going on. So Rattata's going on to fight the winner of Nicarak versus Spacey Macy, making it to the round of eight, which is actually paid out. Uh, Patty Mac versus Aristori going on. Trigger versus Nikic. Spirit versus Maples. Forjumi versus Exo Striker. Geralt versus Crash. Uh, looks like they're still going. Now we just need to find a lobby. Ah, uh, I just missed Geralt and want this other game. Pryfax versus BioWaste going on as well. What my cat wants. What do you want, kitty? You got food and stuff. Oh, wrong tournament? Shit. Oh, God. Damn, you guys don't even have the lobby link. Uh, I thought I already updated this. Now it's there. Hacking Vulcan Cup. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. Freedom Flyer. Gosh, I think people even used it. What do you want, cat? Jeez. No, Charlie. I No. You always pick tournaments to come bug me. It's... He is darn adorable, though. Do you want to sh jump on? Jump over here. Charlie, come here. Come on. Yeah, good boy. So chat can see a cat. See what I'm saying? Look at this big chunk. Tell me that's not a cute cat right there. All right. Good boy. Well, we don't have any lobbies. All right. See, he's not going to leave me alone. Charlie. The purrs are going to be starting. And unfortunately, I missed some stuff. I think we may have this. Damn, I would have liked to see Maples versus Spirit. That went on for quite a while, actually, it looked like. Oh, it was a 2-1. Damn, unlucky Spirit. Maples had a shot. He'd taken a game off Spirit still. Maples is going to kill me for his side of it. Uh, damn, I didn't catch game one of Rattata versus Vindicta. We'll see what we have. Oh, man, no wonder why. Well, nothing we could have done better there. I should have put exclamation mark weekly just in case. Spirit versus Forjumi. Or a Jumi versus Spirit. That's right, Kaiti Gaming Spirit. But this is going to be interesting. Let's see how Four Jumi does. Four Jumi's going to be like, they, I wanted a good bracket. I did my best to get everybody into stuff. Poor Maples, too. Oh, Bang actually had a potential to fight Spirit, too. That's actually pretty wild. And uh, is Trigger on the same side? Wow. No, Trig Trifax and Bioace. Trigger is on the upper bracket. Patty Max advanced to the semifinals. Oh, no. He's on the round of eight. Nice. Trying to do it for the cranky ducklings to avenge Eric and... How did Cuckoo do? I thought Cuckoo played in this. Did he not check in? I just losing it. Maples 2-1 Poppy, too. Damn. 
Trifax to a creature, and it's Trifax versus Bioice. That'd be a good ZVZ. Feed the fat beast. He has food. He wants treats. He just wants attention. He's purring. I'm just trying to find for Jumi versus Spirit. Lorenzo streaming? I see him online, but Hopefully, Four Jumi doesn't hate me after this one. <laughs> but he did make it to the round of eight. <laughs> All right, so we got Four Jumi and Spirit. They're going to be doing their vetoes. Charlie. He do be purring. Look at this guy. He's like a giant teddy bear. Alrighty. Damn, I haven't had spirit in a tournament in a good amount of time. Oh yeah, we do have somebody from Katowice in here. I wish uh, we get. I wish Showtime would play in these too. I think I messaged Mana before about it. He didn't make it, but lots of good players in here. Geralt's fighting Quanta. All right. Sorry, these guys are doing vetoes and stuff, so bear with me. And let's take a look at the match, Reno. So I finally fixed the bracket. Oh, imagine. I turned off the bot because it, and the TTS. But I guess I can put the bot back on. I'll do the Imagine Ghost thing. Fine. It's, is it moving back up? There we go. Now it's coming. Just because of the delay. Come on, bot. Imagine. There we go. Yo, Patty Mac advanced into the round of A2. That's pretty based. The trigger has to beat Nikic. Ooh, Bio Ice beat Trifax 2 0. -oh. Holy heck. I just, I forgot to mention that. Damn. Trifax is a really good Zerg player. Wait, what the fuck? They didn't get me in the lobby? Hello? Yeah, 
Jesus Christ. These guys went into the game. Now I'm missing a, a match. All right, never mind. <laughs> All right, we got this series. Don't worry. God damn it. Just a misclick. Four Doom, he thought I was in the lobby. Mistakes happen. Motherfucking piece of fucking shit! Goddamn fucking shit! All right, anyway... With that said, it's our first game. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Gressfen. In the red, representing at Kitesy Gaming. It is Spirit. Our Terran player. And his opponent in the upper left, representing K10 Gaming. In the green, give it up for four, Juby. Our Protoss player. Who is going to cheese right off the rip. Is he going to two-gate cannon rush Spirit? Oh, is 4 Juby going to do it? Is he going to do it? This is going to be a 2 gate cannon rush. He could be max-paxing him. We'll see. Nope, he's not max-paxing him. Well, maybe. He's got probes in production. Queued up, rather, because this is going to be a proxy gate to the face. Okay, it's just a 2 gate. And he's... Oh, it is a 2 gate cannon rush. Four Jumi's going for the four Jumi special. Is, is he going to get a low ground pot? Yes, he is. Four Jumi is not messing around here. Spirit is going to go for a scout. No, he's not. This is going to be a double gas opener? No. Two racks Reaper? It's two racks Reaper. This is going to be interesting. Four Jumi banking up those minerals. He wants to make sure he gets the zealots first. Photon cannon going out. Okay, it is going to be a marine opener. I think. Spirit's definitely seeing those two cannons come. Mariner is going to go out. You're unlucky. Oh. Am I? <laughs> Let's go. The classic 4 Jumi game banter. Three cannons come out. Two zealots on the way. 4 Jumi is not probing up behind this. He is not looking for a standard macro game. And the factory's following up behind this. Spirit just on one gas, too, at that. The two zealots going to chisel away at the wall, trying to go in and get the bunker after. Before Jimmy wants to get this probe in, is going to try to drop the pylon. He does deny the bunker for a second, but that's going to be pretty easily put back together. Zealot actually chiseling away at one of the... Uh, one of the Marines. Where Jimmy does cancel the pylon because the bunker did finish up there. Agree. Oh, no. This is looking rough. For Jimmy just getting double gas behind this. What a banger of a game. I hope this turns out to be a game. Right now, it's looking a little rough because it's all just slow zealots. Zealots getting high ground to kill another supply depot. But Spirit's already been building supply depots behind this. The tech lab's coming down. Or Jimmy's going to have to back off a little bit, most likely. He's building... Uh, everything's committed over here. There's even the cyber core proxy. Four Jimmy's really making use of that pylon. But a siege tank puts a stop to this. Let's go. Protoss, Protoss. You really want... We can remake again? <laughs> God, I love Four Jimmy. Proxy Robo... Let's go. He's putting a Dave Testa plot twist on this. Okay, he's going to kill the rocks. Oh, no, he gets out of position. He's not going to see the tank. Four Jimmy backs off. Yeah, oh, those are some dead cannons. Ah, this robo is going to be done, too. And unfortunately, three zealots ain't going to do it. Four Jimmy's going to want to cancel that. And this is an artosis pylon on top of it. GG's called. And unfortunately, that was a short one, but the banter is great. We do like to see some cannon rushes in here. Oh, man. My man, Fort Jumi, trying to do as good as he can. 
<laughs> oh, I'm feeling bad for Miggs, though, too. He, I think he had a good shot against him. <laughs> the quote of the day, it's okay if we remake... It was two racks. Reaper was the play. So Spirit would just already had a, a blind build order counter. Literally, memeing got me so rude for Shumi. <laughs> uh. <laughs> These guys are great. All right, he's down a down a game, but I don't think he's going to two gate cannon rush again. Or is he spawning in the upper left hand corner, representing K10 Gaming? Give it up for Four Jumi. And his opponent in the lower right, representing Kitesy Gaming in the red. Give it up for Spirit. Well, guys, it went from Four Jumi to Poor Jumi. Blind build order count. Ooh, spirit. Going for more cheeky stuff. Going for a fast gas. This is going to be a proxy. Is he going to proxy Marauder him? Proxy Marauder's been happening a bit more, and I think that that may actually be the case. We'll see. That, yeah, it's probably going to be proxy Marauder. So this is going to scout like a normal opener, more or less. Wait, for Jumi. Is he going to see the uh, SEV? Is he going to see the SEV? That's huge! That's huge! Four Jumi might be okay. Okay, it's probably gonna be an eBay block now. Yep. Giddy up. Hey, thanks for the follow in 1537. Oh my goodness, this is uh this is wild. Four Jumi with a perfect response to the eBay. I, I kinda like it a little better than a zealot, but he is kinda overextending with the uh Couple of the probes. I think he just pulled one more. Or is it gonna cancel? But guess what? Is it gonna be a cancel? Wait, there's gonna be a zealot anyway. All right, so it is still a single gas build, but it is gonna be a barracks factory opener. So pr probably gonna be Hellions. Or Jumi does get his nexus down at a good time still uh, after the core. So everything's looking pretty normal for Four Jumi. Han Mono, no, you missed the tournament. But uh, you could have had to play Spirit, how it was looking on the bracket, so you might have lucked out. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry you could not play. I was hoping Nina could play too. Nina, unfortunately, had work today. It's a bunch of you that I was hoping could play. Nice was looking to play. Poor Mio Micah got knocked out, I think, uh, earlier on. It is a rough time for Asia, I know. I tried doing it uh, a little earlier than usual, but for EU and NA, but also a little earlier than uh, normal. Okay, it's going to be a tech lab opener, so this is going to be... Is this going to be a big push from uh, Spirit? That's the question. Is he just playing defensively? Or Jumi is going Stargate, so this Cyclone is going to be a bit of a problem if it's an Oracle opener. I hope he goes like Phoenix Colossus or Phoenix Charge, honestly. Uh, let's see how Four Jumi gets a good scout on this. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Han Mano. Sorry to hear that. Damn, that sucks, man. Oh, poor guy. I'm yeah, more than missing the tournament. I'm sorry you got stuck outside. That sucks, man. All right, looks like we... Oh, it's just a second gate. Pretty standard after this, but this is going to be an immediate push. Just a Phoenix out and a, a couple of adepts. So this already is going to be hard to hold. Or Jimmy is trying to get a shield battery with this. But the Cyclone is not immediately pushing, waiting for this group of seven Marines. 
Uh, this is going to be a bit of a problem. We don't have another Phoenix coming either. The Cyclone is started. Oh, we do have two Phoenixes. Okay, two Phoenixes could be all right, but there is a bunch of Marines. Spirit is going to wait for more reinforcements. Uh, no stem yet, obviously, from the timings. But anyway, we're going to be trying to hold. He's going to kill a couple of Marines, but oh, he does lose an Adept. He needs absolutely everything to hold this. Warp Gate's not even done yet. Which is a bit of a problem, so he can't get out of Stalker or anything. Two Cyclones going to be an additional problem. Four Doomies forced to pull the poison, and luckily, that shield battery was a little too forward-facing. The pylon's even going to be depowered by all these Marines. So Four Doomy just has three Phoenixes, one gate production. He does manage to drop a pylon. Can the probes and the Phoenixes do God's work? No. The Cyclone is going to be dropped. The Marines getting cleaned up by the probes, however, and one Stalker is out. Okay, well, he's going to attempt to get another Stalker, but two Cyclones are a bit of a problem. The uh, damage point change is a little... It's not going to matter. Both Stalkers falling. Another Phoenix coming out. Damn, Spirit might just clean this up really quickly. Poor Doomy has, like, next to nothing, so... Where I was kind of, like, in a Phoenix opener. I think if he was going Phoenix Charge, he would have had more gates. Man, oof, GG, well played. Very sad. Or Jumi. Mm, sad. All right, that was unlucky. And did he... Was that at least the round of eight? Let's see. Yeah, it was the... Round of eight, so let's see here. <laughs> All right, I got to see who's up now. Spirit goes on to fight. Let's see. Let me refresh the bracket. Nicarak versus Rattata. Trigger versus Patty Mac. Oh gosh, am I missing that? Fuck. That is definitely one I want to see in the round of eight. The very tough one for. Oh, Trigger. Shit. Shit, I just Trigger started in Patty Mac. Damn. All right, so that is the other side of it. Geralt versus Quanta still going on. Oh, sick. We're going to do Trigger versus Patty Mac. Patty Mac versus Trigger. Finally, we got a Trigger game for you Trigger fans. You know we're all a bunch of Trigger fans on the Dave stream here. I'm a fan of a lot of these guys. Trigger, my, Trigger's my dude. Patty Max, my dude too, though. That's just, this. Uh, this is based. This is the goaded match up here. All right. Here we are. I believe this is the first game of the series. We just lucked out spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Ancient Cistern. Representing Basilisk Gaming, the goaded team in the blue. Give it up for Trigger. And his opponent in the upper right. Speaking of goaded teams, representing the Cranky Ducklings. Give it up for Patty Mac in the red. Wait, did Pat, unless Patty Mac is no longer with the Ducklings, he's taking a break for life, I know, but this is definitely going to be a banger of a PvP. Trigger is setting up kind of Max Pack style, or we could say Trigger style, though. 
He does like his one gate expanse. Uh, looks like it's going to be a one gate versus a two gate. We'll see. We have a very base PvP. And if any of you were playing and are watching the stream, uh, thank you very much. Even if you got eliminated earlier, whatever. I really appreciate you guys playing. A lot of upsets. A lot of hopium we were having for some. Poor Mr. Miggs is coping right now. Poor Forjumi. At least Forjumi made it to the top eight. So everybody in the top eight's at least getting a few bucks. Guys, please use those Matcherino codes. Exclamation mark Matcherino. All you have to do is click login. You can uh, link a Google account, your Battle.net account, Twitter, I think. It's It's got all sorts of ways to make an account quick, and it's instantaneous, and you just click claim code. Patty Mac looks like he might be going for three gate robo or four gate. Uh, we'll see. Three gate robo, pretty in the meta, or at least proxy robo could be two gate. Trigger is going to scout. There is no pile on there, and this is uh, going to be three gate robo, it looks like. Oh, no proxy gate, though. Patty Mac unable to deny this. Okay, he's opening double adapt. And getting his additional pile on. All right, he is just going to be annoying. Get a little scout here. He's going to see it's going to be another gateway from Trigger. So, oh, another gate opening. Trigger going for an adapt as well. Uh, and the probe is going to be taken down. Yeah, I prefer three gate robo. It's two gate, but we'll see. And the Robo is going to be scouted by the Adept. Two Stalkers on the way for Patty Mac. Trigger with an or uh, Oracle Sentry follow-up. Going for a Robo of his own. Little unlucky for Patrick Mac here. My boy Patty Mac. Fun fact, I once casted with Trigger, Patty Mac, and Maples. All at the same time. In a randomly put together tournament. It was pretty funny. The good old days. And for Jumi. All right, let me see what's going on here. Results are in for Geralt. Geralt was unfortunately eliminated, I believe, by Quanta then. A uh, very tough Terran player. I just got the results in from that. My man Geralt getting taken down, unluckily. Oop. And uh, here we go. Immortal coming on out. Alrighty. Well, sorry about that. I had some messages. Probably shouldn't be worrying about them right now. Because uh, we're approaching the semifinals. Ooh, Patty Mac looks like he's in a tough, uh, tough position here. Trigger with that Immortal out and the battery overcharge. Eh, it was not the fight Patty Mac was wanted to take. It's pretty close, but the very injured Immortal is probably the biggest problem for Patty Mac. Did he get another gate down? No, this, yeah, he did. He fully walled with the third gate. Uh, just preventing any harass once he saw it was a robo opener, too. The Trigger with the Warp Prism as well is going to be a problem. Uh, trigger where it seemed like he was supply block for a second, but. He just has so much static defense. This is going to be tough for Patty Mac to crack. Oh! Patty Mac almost had enough DPS to take care of the War Prism. If that War Prism fell, that would have been big. But as I frequently say, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, it'd be Christmas all year round. All right, a lot of pressure on the Cyber Core for Trigger, but 
Still got that robotic facility. One of the gates falling down is a bit of a problem. Uh, despite the uh, economic lead, obviously it's a two base versus a one base. So Patty Mac is 100% all in. Uh, just a couple stalkers for trigger and losing the gateway means less units that shoot up. Just two stalkers. Another immortal coming for Patty Mac. He saves the other one. So he leads in immortals. Is it possible that Patty Mac takes this? Uh, another immortal in production for trigger. Actually, trigger's gate did uh, survive with all these shield batteries. Battery overcharge, I believe, will be a bit. It, no, it's on cooldown. And uh, Patty Mac has a lot of adepts. So these zealots are helpful against all the immortals. But with all these adepts from uh, Patty Mac, he, it's looking a little rough for trigger. Does have enough uh, adepts to even possibly cheek in a nice shade. See these adepts even with the uh, shield batteries are going to just chew through the zealots. Forcing Trigger into some adepts of his own. This is a lot of immortals. Nice warp prism micro from Trigger. But can he hold? This is so many immortals. Chiseling through the stalkers. Oh my god, is Patty Mac going to do it? Trigger is certainly the favored player in this matchup. But I think, oh my gosh, it's the battle of US versus Canada. And I think Patty Mac's going to do this. GG. Patty Mac takes game number one. What an upset. You know something? We almost had a good amount of the entire Cranky Ducklings. All right. And this tournament with all these players is already advancing on. Anyway, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Neo Humanity. In the blue, representing Basilisk Gaming. Give it up for Trigger. And his opponent in the upper left, representing the Cranky Ducklings. Give it up for Patty Mac in the red. Yeah, this is... That was a very good push. How you doing, Goliath? Welcome, Panic, again to the first person in chat earlier. Nuggler Smuggler. Hack Respect. Zerg Scum. Good to see everybody. Fisherman was hanging earlier. A bunch of you guys. Sibba John. Oh, man. So, interesting results here. <laughs> Alrighty. That is going to be a two gate this time from Trigger, same as Patty Mac. So, I, you know, I don't hate that. Patty Mac had this the proxy robo game on point the last one. All right. Cell Naga Tower uh, attempted to be taken from Patty Mac. Is he going for proxy or is he looking for proxies? Yeah, he's looking for proxies. Trigger, not really going for a scout. Trigger has not scouted yet. He's just looking to expand. He's 2 gate expanding. No, he is. Okay. He's going to scout after everything. Patty Mac looking to proxy possibly now. Yeah, it's looking like he is going for a proxy. This game could be a proxy robo again, but the two gate is going to put a uh, different situation for trigger. Is he going to see this probe? Oh, 
if Trigger immediately finds us, it could end up being a metagame proxy pylon. Oh yeah, Patty Mac cancels the pu yeah. Trigger is not gonna scout a pylon, and guess what? It's not actually there. This might actually get under Trigger's skin because, you know what? There was no proxy pylon. Patty Mac may change his plan. Uh, yeah, he's just going to do a Twilight. So, Twilight before Nexus could still be a four gate or something, but we'll see. Uh, Patty Mac did open Stalkers. Trigger going for a Robo this time. So this should be an interesting one. Uh, funnily enough, Trigger didn't get that Stalker. Oh no, he did actually get some damage on it. But he's looking for proxies. Patty Mac may just uh, get a little bit of an advantage here on that. Blink started up. Trigger doesn't have his robotic facility yet. I like how Trigger has the probe uh, in preparation for possibility of adepts. Uh, but neither player really knowing what's going on from the other one totally. In fact, Patty Mac has no idea. It's three gate robo in base from Trigger in game number two. Senju, how you doing, by the way, too? And we're going to have some good pressure. Ooh, ooh. Actually, that evened now, but Trigger taking the worst fight. The other stalker is going to go down. Yeah, that's it. Oh, he might lose all the stalkers. That could be very unlucky. Patty Mac. Going to proxy again is not going to be able to do so. Trigger is getting a warp prism out, not an immortal. That's usually the play with his build. But blink stalkers could be a bit of a problem. And Patty Mac trading a little more efficiently there. He's going to be the aggressor. And yeah, there was another gate. Yeah, it's four gate blink with just a proxy pylon. The proxy pylon's not scouted. But Trigger's going to have a warp prism. So it's going to be four gate versus three gate. And blink is going to be an issue, though. Uh, army supply in favor of Trigger. Is going to be pretty nice. Trigger still not going to find this proxy. It might even be another proxy gate after. But with the numbers lead, it's going to look good for Trigger. The problem is without blank. Trigger may be in a bit of a predicament. That's a lot of stalkers for Patty Mac still. Um, and again, with blank, it will be an issue. Patty Mac not. Oh, now he's tipped his hat that he is blank. But is a Twilight opener versus a Robo opener. This might be a little rough for Trigger. Hey, hey, hey. Who Yo. wants to have some fun? Showtime. Thank you for the raid. Thank you so much, my Protoss brother. I am on a two-minute delay, so sorry about that. I hope you had a fantastic stream, and hopefully we get you to play in one of these. I know you don't really like small tournaments. Uh, but yeah. Thank you so much. Decent indeed. Welcome, everybody. All right. Patty Mac still not giving up on the proxy. Army supply looking pretty even. Trigger going for a defensive immortal. Is this proxy going to be scouted? Ooh, Patty Mac going for an aggressive pylon right here. Uh, we'll see what happens. Now, well, what's going to happen is that's one dead pylon. That's a kill, not a cancel. And uh, Trigger with Big Daddy Immortal out going into a Twilight Council of his own. Giddy up. Trigger needs to defend. Patty Mac going for a Nexus behind us. And we'll see what happens. Thank you for the follow, Christopher, with all the zeros. I don't know how many zeros that is because math and stream don't work for old Davy boy. All right. Trigger is going into Blink of his own. Uh, all on one base. Not too uncommon in PvP in these situations. And again, Trigger on his back foot. Patty Mac actually doing pretty well in this series. But still, it's looking pretty good for Trigger with Big Daddy Immortal out. And the fact that Blink's on the way. Trigger is going to need to expand. Thanks for the follow-up for the Wolverine Starcraft. Should he have dove the prism? And... Uh, Giddy up. Thanks for the follow channel 75. I might actually hide my alerts so we don't cover up the game here. And I got to say, guys, there was a lot of players signing up. A decent amount checked in. 54 players signed up in total. And we did have a check in of 34, so not too bad. This week. And we probably will have a tournament next week as well. Uh, if any of you guys want to harass Showtime to play, he's going to probably say no still. <laughs> but maybe in the next one. Oh my goodness. 
Battery overcharge is enabled. Triggers is pulverizing through this. He's going to have Blink. And in the numbers game, Triggers just takes this. Fully committed on one base. Going three gate robo into Blink. Immortal is going to fall. Patty Mac managed to get an Immortal of his own. But I don't think he's going to be able to do it, folks. GG. We're going to a third game in this series. Very well done by Trigger. Giddy up. Hey, thanks for the foul crab, Dibble. I have no idea why I have duplicate uh, alerts here on this one still, but we're, we're just going to deal with it. Damn, this is a banger of a series. We do have Spirit playing. Uh, as well, just so you guys know, if you want to see the bracket, it's exclamation mark Bree. Crab dribble. Oh, shit, they found my proxy. Well, all the proxies were found ultimately in that game, other than that one pylon. Let's see what game number three brings us. All right, so yeah, what we have going on is Quanta versus Bioice, otherwise. Nicarak versus Rattata. Wait, tr oh, tr Trigger did win. Okay. So Trigger did win. Trigger is going on to fight the winner of Nicarak and Rattata. Bioice and Quanta going on to fight Spirit. So I'm going to see if I can catch Nicarak and Rattata. Spirit is advanced to the semifinals. <clears throat> uh, and we'll see what happens. Let's see what we can find. War matches. Tournament has been zipping through. Uh, so we will see what we can get. Some upsets here for sure. Geralt getting taken down by Quanta, unfortunately. For Jumi not taking a game off. Maples, unfortunately, having to fight... Spirit, and he did take a game off Spirit. I really want to see those replays. Uh, Vindicta actually got spanked by Rattata, unfortunately. That was a big sag. Let's see here. I'm just trying to see if we got any games. We're kind of at that awkward point where... The beard makes me look like Lenny. Hey, it's just a goatee. I actually need to shave, too, so... Some of this is... Uh... <laughs> All right, so let's see what's going on here. I'm just going to stay on NA, I guess. Oh, I missed Quanta versus uh, Bioice. Folks, do not go anywhere. We'll see what happens. Some good runs from a lot of players, too. Damn, Patty make. Oh, Neo Micah got walked over. All right. Fortunately, Giddy up. some of these guys didn't make it. And yeah, thanks for the follow, Swarmock. Hmm. Man, I, did I scare everybody away from the raid or what? What's going on here? <laughs> no. We'll see what happens. Uh, just bear with me. We don't really have any control over the bracket, but we'll see what's happening. I think I'm going to message Trigger, too.
Poisty, how you doing? Still four of the main codes remaining. Yeah, thank you so much for that, guys. Please use the remaining four Matcherino codes. Thanks to Vlad the fourth, by the way, too, uh, for adding thirty. And Chad Madu put this on. Super shout out to him for the contribution. For the Dave Testa open number six. That's Dave Chicken Man Testa, head of the Gambinos. Yes. Usually I do these with Chicken Man as well. Um, Quanta and... Yeah, we're waiting on Quanta and... Uh, Bioice, uh, winner advanced to the semifinals. Everybody that was in the round of eight is getting paid out. And we'll see what happens. Classic Dave here, you know. Smoking indoors like a D-Gen. A thing of the past that people don't do anymore that are smart. Yeah, we're just at an unlucky timing. Uh... Hopefully, I wish we had some more casters today, but unfortunately, some things didn't work out. I'll try to plan something out a little differently. Maybe we'll try a Saturday or something, but I like to pick Sundays because usually we don't have a lot of events going on. All right. So it's just how it goes. Base fisherman. All right. We will see what happens here in a momento. Guys, I think we might need... Uh, I think this may be a beverage day. So after the tournament, this thing's freaking flying today. Uh, I'm probably going to do some ladder. If you guys want to hang around, I'll be losing the delay after. But we still have... Some other matches to go. So in the meantime, I guess I will enable TTS. It's a 90 second delay this time. Oh, Rattata just got out. Hey, thanks for the follow, Baracus. So it is going to be Trigger versus Rattata. We have Trigger versus Rattata. Rattata versus Trigger. We've seen this one a few times in the upper bracket semifinals. And for those of you that enjoy the casting normally, sorry I didn't cast World Team League today. It was a little early for me. That was... Plus, I figured Steadfast and Wardy were covering it, so you know how that'd be. Hey, God, I may do something else. Is this the Dan Macko one? This is not the Dan Macko one. This is the Chad Mandu one. But Dan Macko ended up getting a tournament out of it. We got an extra tournament out of it, Ghost. <laughs> so there will be another Am I or am I so sane that you Yo, just Yo, Spanmeister, thank you so Spanmeer, much for Mr. the seven months in a row. 137 just subscribed. Less than three. Yeah, Maples, it was a three-gate robo. So 
So guys, yeah, the classic PvP Clown Fiesta. Patty Mac did pretty well. It was a good series. I didn't see game one though. Uh, game two that was. So that was my mistake. I didn't know the score. Trigger versus Rattata coming right up. Those guys were just doing some vetoes. So, funnily enough, I'm going to be casting the semifinals after the finals on Spirit side, depending on how this goes. Trigger versus Rattata could take a long time, uh, just because it's late for some of these guys after. Very sick tournament, though. Even though it is running through fucking fast. Maples, how you doing? Oh, Wardy's running his tournament. Yeah, yeah. I... <laughs> Bad job, Dave. Yeah, there was a few conflicts for this. So I'm sure more people would come. Guys, there will be more of these. Dan Mako had donated some money to me for one of them as well. But this week, Chad Mandu put this one on. So the Dan and Dave cash grab will be coming up. Uh, I believe we're going to have Vlad doing one the other time. He was going to be casting as well today, but that wasn't the case. Maybe we can get Flapjack in here for this. All right, so we need a few minutes for Rattata. He just needs to take a few. Oh, Cranky Ducklings also had it covered. Yeah, yeah. Giddy up. Good call. I'm glad for that. Hey, thanks for the follow, Ayogi. Ayogu. And Barakas. Swarmok. Wait, am I looking at this right? Yes. Crab Dibble. The Wolverine Starcraft. Channel 75. And thanks again, Spanmeister. Guys, if you got any subs laying around does help dave live for right now because i am unemployed okay and we have a game apparently they made me a host for some reason good to see you playing maples i'm sorry you got spirit brother so Maples took a macro game off Spirit, by the way, guys. I really want those replays. I think we might look back through on some of these. I got to bug people. A lot of these guys are going to be asleep. But uh, I think we should look back through on some of the games we didn't get to cover before. Uh, regardless of the results, because they weren't casted. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Babylon. Representing Basilisk Gaming. Give it up for Trigger. And his opponent in the bottom right. I can't remember what team he's on now. Formerly from Good Game Gaming in the red. It is Rattata. Little PVZ action. We're going to look at uh, Rattata a little more. But then again, Trigger can spice things up too. We'll see what happens here. All right. Yeah, it's going to be just a gate scout from Trigger. Rattata looking for... Yeah, he's, he's going to play a hatch for his game. Rattata can certainly be cheeky sometimes. Uh, we'll see what comes out of Trigger. He can do some spicy PvZ builds, but we will find out. So on the other side, it's going to be the winner of BioWays versus Quanta versus Kaiti Gaming Spirit. All right, just a little bit of mineral uh, harass here. Probe going to be annoying as usual to Mr. Zorgi Zorg. And just a little bit of scouting, but it is a pretty standard game. 19 Nexus, 20 core for Trigger. What? Oh. Well, eventually. And yeah, not too much to talk about just yet. Just a pretty standard macro opener so far. Is Trigger going to block the third is the question or scout it? Uh, but the pool is going to be finishing up, so I don't think we're really going to see anything too too cheeky here. Just curious to see the builds out of these guides uh, from here. It's probably could be metabolic food, uh, first from Rattata, which would be pretty standard ZVP, but we'll see. Metabolic before third, but... 
more so curious if Trigger's gonna go Stargate or Twilight. He does go Robo sometimes. Alright. Ling's gonna chase the probe. And Rattata. Yeah, this should tell Trigger if he can scout this that it is metabolic before the third, but eh, Rattata is gonna secure it. It is the case. And it is going to be a Stargate opener from Trigger. So we're not really too surprised about that. Very standard in the meta play. Uh, out of both players. Rattata probably going to go for plus one melee if I was the guest. Not to make one of those calls. He's got a lot of spicy bills. and Depends if uh, what type of Stargate player Trigger uh, Trigger's going to do. If he's going for the hero style. Oh, actually it's going to be a Void Array opener. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. This could be pretty spicy stuff for out of trigger. Could still be something like the hero build. It could be void rays into resonating glaives. It could be a lot of things. It could be actual Stargate play. But still, I, I do like the void ray opener. Just to change things up a little bit. Uh, we've had some bangers today, guys. Uh, so for those of you that didn't check it, check out my YouTube as well. Uh, this will be on eventually. Uh, but from there, we'll see what happens. Prismatic alignment activated, killing an overlord. And that is going to supply block Rattata for actually quite a bit. So this is going to mess with Rattata's build a little bit. Overlord's a ways off. It is going to finish up here in a second. It's certainly going to mess with some drone production. It is going to be an Oracle follow-up trigger going for a fast third. So... If I was the guest, this is going to be <clears throat> hero build-esque. The Void Ray opener. Uh, well, a little bit of an overextension from Trigger, but so far he's not taking hull damage. He's taking a little bit of shields. Uh, unable to get the creep tumor. Oracle going to try to get some workers forcing. Actually, that was a great defense from Rattata. Uh, he did actually drop two spores. One he's going to use anyway. Uh, let's see how many spores he's got. Eh, one in each base. Pretty decent, and Trigger's Nexus is going to finish up pretty soon. All right, we do have a Robo, a Twilight, and a Forge. Okay, interesting follow-up from Trigger. Usually just a Twilight Forge, but he's going for the Robo, the Twilight, and the Forge. Uh, and it is going to be a Roach Warren play for Rattata. Okay, so it is not going to be necessarily plus one melee. It could still be, and Rattata's going into his lair as well. So this Robo is actually going to be pretty good for Trigger. Uh, with the Roach Warren opener for Rattata. Void Ray and Oracles being annoying. Couple, yeah, four, five, six workers falling, but both Oracles taking hull damage. Uh, just out of range from the Spore Crawler. That's pretty good for Trigger. Do these Adepts get any damage? One is taking a lot of health damage. Uh, Evo Chamber Block does prevent the Adepts from getting more. Eight workers falling in total, though, so very well done by Trigger. Uh, losing the two Adepts is rough, but as long as he didn't lose the two Oracles, I think he's in a fantastic position going into an Immortal Blink and another Robotics Facility, so it's probably going to be a Blink Stalker disrupt their opener, and I do believe he did get the read on the Roach Warren, that would mean. Infestation Pit, pretty fast from Rattata. Is he going to go into a fast hive is the question and he's only on three bases mind you because did lose a lot of drones he's it's possible we see a fast hive lurkers uh, but we'll see what happens blink and plus one well underway uh, not a lot of units from either player at this point trigger with an army supply lead for the moment and it is a three hatchery zerg kind of an interesting play from Rattata. oh he's going into swarm host never mind we have Swarm Host memes, folks. Rattata with a good scout with the Overseer. Uh, this could be pretty good. Welcome, Marco Yolo, Stevie J, Pudding Puppy, Nomadic SWA. All right, we'll see. Yeah, it's a very late fourth base. That should be a bit of a tell for Trigger. He is going to see the Swarm Host, I think. Well, eventually. Swarm Host pushing across the map slowly. They're just waddling. Fun fact, they're meme but they are my favorite Zerg unit. Don't ask me why. I just think they're good memes. 
one of my favorite things, which is not a build, except for, for my friend Chetakis. The Swarm Host Master. His proxy infestation pit, Swarm Host. <laughs> He's a Masters 1 Zerg player. It's uh, pretty hilarious. Usually plays Swarm Host and faster. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about those biles. I mean, actually, they did uh, catch some of the lings, but Trigger with some decent defense. He's got Blink Stalkers and Immortal. Uh, that is not too chabby. Will not have any Archons, but Colossi are on their way. Stasis Wards could be a bit of a problem, and the Locusts are on cooldown. So we do have some Queens and some Corrosive Biles here. Going to take down the Force Fields. Uh, some Locusts coming in here. And this is where Stasis Wards could come in big. Ah, look at a, a good number of Locusts caught. Three Ravagers in a, or two Ravagers in a Roach actually caught in here as well. Kind of an awkward fight for Trigger. The one Void Ray actually going to be a nuisance. Queen's uh, already out of energy, and well, one of them wasn't. He needs these Queens to fight off the Void. But they, it could fall to a set of Corrosive Biles. Actually, that Void Ray is taking a lot of damage, and there still is two Queens. But this is a lot of trigger. Trigger looks like he's holding, but it looks like there's going to be a swarm host run by Locust. Going to be off cooldown in a minute. Trigger pushing on the other front. Uh, there is going to be a hive coming. So here we go. Locust going in. Why is he going to the third? Go to the net. Go to the net. He's going to split him. No. No. He's going to target the static, the battery, the cannon. He's not going to target the pylon after. Okay, he's a little bit. I think he should have just depowered the pylon. But meanwhile, do Colossi... Four Immortals and a bunch of Blink Stalkers pushing on this side. Looking very good for Trigger. So he does hold. Nine workers did fall. Trigger's going to cancel his Nexus, and he's just going all in. Yeah, I don't think Rattata can hold this. The Roach Warren in jeopardy. Gleal Reconstitution not even down. I think Rattata memed his way to the sun. A fast hive or not, but yeah, just the unfortunate thing with Swarm Host. Trigger's build... And uh, defense just was too good. I think the build was pretty good to counter this. I do like that Trigger canceled his fourth, though, because Rattana just got his in. It is 68 to 57 workers. Trigger losing those workers was a little rough. And another Colossi fallen. It's not good for Trigger, but I still think he's got enough to fight this. Let's take a look at the upgrades. It's plus two versus plus one uh, ranged attacks. Trigger on plus two ground weapons. And yeah, this is going to be a lot of stalkers warping in here. Another Roachborn re rebuilt. Ling's being forced out, and they don't have melee. So Rattata threw me off. I thought this would be pretty cut and dry, straightforward. Plus one into plus two melee Ling's. But that was not the case. Oh, War Prism falling for Trigger's rough. And the Colossi is surrounded. There are a lot of Stalkers here. The Roach Warren is going to finish up here in a second. The Swarm Hosts are just sitting here as basically targets. Oops, sorry about that. And, yeah. Drones are forced to be pulled. Corrosive Biles are evaded by the Blink. Rattata's in a rough position. The Swarm Host still on cooldown for Locust. He's going to try to... Does he get a wave off? No, GG. Trigger takes game number one. Very well played. You know, this tournament's been a... Uh, I don't know. All right, we do have our game two ready to go. Is this going to be a 2-0 or is Rattata going to do a reverse sweep? Or are we at least going to see a 2-1? We'll see. Uh, my last tournament we had, Trigger did win. Yeah, it was Trigger and Max Pax in the finals. All right, moving on. He is up a point, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Dragon Scales in the blue. Representing Basilisk Gaming, it is Trigger.
And his opponent in the upper left, representing question mark. In the red is Rattata. I should have asked him his team in between this. I just forgot. I saw the tweet. Can't remember. Boomer moment. That was a pretty sick hold and counter push from Trigger. Uh, even making the decision to cancel that fourth base and not letting the game play out. He's like, you know what? We're just going to try to win this with brute force. And the plus two advantage definitely helped. And it looks to be a pretty standard game. Rattata not cheesing game number two. Again, I will be casting the other semifinals after the finals. Uh, just to allow these guys to get to bed that are later. Spirit, Rattata, a lot of these guys, it's getting late for them on a Sunday night here in the United States. And the East Coast, at least, it's only just after 3, so p.m. All right, we'll see what happens from here. Is going to be a pretty standard opener for both of them this game. I don't think Rattata is going to meme his way out of this game, though. It was a cool idea, but Trigger just totally build order countered uh, Rattata, I feel like. Rattata did get some decent damage, but just not enough. And uh, ultimately, that's just the way she goes when you're going Swarm Hose sometimes. Unlocky, how you doing? Uh, Stevie J, no, there's not. Though people will very likely be spanked. The, generally speaking, these are open MMR tournaments. We've had some big upsets. I've had uh, Diamond Player actually take a game off Rattata. Uh, we've had all sorts of upsets. I've seen plenty of Diamond Players do some crazy stuff. In some of my tournaments, I do have max MMR caps. But not minimum ones. All right. How you doing, Nomadics? How we doing on Matcherito codes? Thank you for that. If we have, we may be used up, but if not, guys, use all those codes. Adds 25 cents to the prize pool. Adept getting some good value and uh, does clean up a Zergling. We'll see what happens from here. Uh, Adept shading back and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Is going to be an Oracle opener from Trigger. Uh, nothing too cheeky from Rattata. He is going to finish Metabolic Boost, so Speedlings are available. Depth's just going to retreat for Trigger. Is he just going for a quick expand? We are, yeah, he is. It's the hero build. That is the sub 340 next. Actually, that's a really greedy third base from Trigger. <clears throat> I don't know. I, usually, I think... Taking a third that fast, you should not move out with your first Oracle, in my opinion. Uh, Trigger knows better, but I've seen so many games where people lose it. I lose quite a bit myself at that. Uh, no cap. If we get, you know, from pushing out because you just don't have enough defense. But guess what? The second Oracle comes. Trigger does lose a pylon, but that's it. He's able to retain the base. So still, he's able to defend. The two adepts coming back was a good pull, at least. And Trig uh, Rattata didn't overextend. So, with that said, let's see what we got. No kills on the Oracles. Uh, Rattata going for a push for more pressure on the third. There is an adept split. Uh, and we are going into basically the same as previously. Twilight Council, Robo, and Forge. Uh, this time, Rattata going for a plus one and a Baneling Nest. Do we see a layer coming yet? Yeah, he's got the Baneling Nest, so we should have a layer follow-up from our Zerg player. But it is not happening just yet. I do like the <clears throat> bailing nest in plus one. Uh, but it's going to be a charge opener from Trigger. Very cool stuff. Uh, not Blink Stalkers. He's going to change it up a little bit. Hydrate. Yes, I could use a little hydration. Thank you for that. I should have done that before. I forgot to grab water. 
getting a little raspy here. All right, the Oracle's doing a little Zergling roundup and uh, not going to find much value there. Ling, yeah, getting, in, getting a little information, just being annoying, but shield battery's going to prevent it. Does body block the, uh, the gateway trigger was trying to put in to prevent Baneling bus. Uh, Oracles and Zealot's going to hold this off. Charge is a ways away, and Trigger has defense in every location. Uh, with that said, we are getting the layer. Just now it's about 75% complete. No Banelings just yet. Big Daddy Immortal's going to help hold the wall. But the two Adepts and Immortal are going to hold this off for now. It's a lot of Lings. Roach Warren follow-up for Mr. Trigger. Another Immortal coming. Banelings trying to get in, and with that later... Oh, actually that was a nice bust, but there's a second pylon. Rattata was hoping to depower this and get some extra damage with the Zerglings. But the battery and cannon still stand, so he's going to have to disengage. He is taking a fourth base. Had a good time this game. It's more of a macro game, this one. Uh, Centrifugal Hooks is being researched, and Melee plus one going to finish for our Zerg player, Mr. Rattata. Just now, ground weapons for Trigger following up behind it. Centrifugal and plus two on the way for Rattata. All right. Uh, I like the map presence from Rattata, though. He's got a couple wings out. Overlord's kind of all over the place. He knows this is a very heavy Stargate commitment. Trigger getting some good value here with these Oracles, though. It does get five workers. Oh, a clutch transfuse on the drone. That was that was pretty nice from Rattata. That's funny. He wants to save these drones. Five going down. Let's take a look at the trade so far. Yeah, our Zerg player losing a lot from the attempt at... Uh, taking out the third. It has delayed Trigger's fourth base if that's how he's going, but he could just be going for a big three base push. Uh, and it's going to be a Mortal Archon charge lot from Trigger, the boomer build. You're, you're not upset, Mark Leolo? I hope you guys are enjoying the games today. You came in later. We had some crazy banger series. I started out with Eric versus Geralt, and they were just that was a banger series. It was a 2-0. But I'm probably going to send that one to my buddy Loco. All right. Honestly, I hope I can get replays from these guys after. We'll see. If you're kind enough to, it's always hard to, uh, in general, get them around from... Because there's a lot not covered. All right, Stasis Ward is going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Corrosive Bile does take it out. Nice shot from Rattata. As it was going down, Army Supply in favor of Rattata, but Trigger is keeping up on it. He is still not on that fourth base because he knows there's a lot of Zerg out. Rattata going for a fifth. Trigger is going to want to try to get a fourth base here, I think. His army is massive, however, and the only thing that could, I could see being an issue is we don't have Psionic Storm. If you need some kind of AoE, and especially against Ling Bane, I think uh, Psy Storm is pretty good. He does force a cancel on the fourth base and is going to get a pylon cancel as well, not a kill. However, there's a big bust into the natural. Wait, what? Why did Rattata back off? He's going to go engage the army instead. He wants to try to fight this. Oh, nice micro from Trigger. Saving two immortals from the corrosive Biles with the uh, Warp Prism. Biles just narrowly dodging targets over on the left flank. Very good stuff. Alrighty. This is looking pretty good. Trigger trying to get... Uh, Rattata's doing a good job to land this fourth at least, but Trigger is... Getting a massive Protoss death ball, and I think he's just going to push out a Hydra Den just coming for Rattata, going into plus three melee, but that's not going to finish here. He's basically going to have to hold. Rattata supply blocked even for a second. Oof. All right, the Observer not coming with the army for the creep. Eh, actually, that might not be bad because he can fight this, but Trigger is fighting on creep here, with that said. A uh, lot of Biles, but... That was a good evade from Trigger. However, does Rattata hold? Look at these splits from Trigger. I know it sounds crazy, but these units are all slow and clunky, minus the uh, Blink Stalkers, of course. And Trigger actually evaded a lot of this. Ooh, Rattata landed some sick Biles right there, but Charge Lot's coming in the flank. More Immortals. 
Stalker's taking a lot of damage, but there's not a lot of units for Rattata. He's trying to get some Lings out, getting some Roaches out. This uh, fifth base looking like it is in trouble. Nope, Trigger's just going to continue on his assault. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Rattana's going to be able to get some Banelings out for these charge lots. I was talking about splash damage from Trigger, but he's just hitting like a powerhouse with a plus two timing. And as good as the, as the defense was for Rattata, Trigger was just splitting like a madman. He's playing quite well today. 25 drones falling. Honestly, Trigger is on point with his micro today. Uh, just as, at the same time, Patty Mac playing very well before uh, taking a game off Trigger. All right, nice zealot run by going over here, and we'll see what happens. Another hatch going down. So Rattata's just on three hatches. Trigger was able to take his additional base. I like this flank attempt from Rattata, but realistically, it's not looking good for him. He's trying to hang on, but no, that's a 2-0 from Trigger. Very well played by Rattata. He did at least make it to the semifinals, and there you have it. I think Rattata should have just beelined, at least split off and put the Banelings in the natural earlier. GG's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reading this after the delay. There was just not enough out. Trigger just hit with a really nasty timing. Uh, so Trigger has advanced to the finals. Let's take a look. Are we at the finals? Wata versus BioAce. What's going on? Damn. BioWise and Quanta are still on. They must be on a game three, I would imagine, but it is. That is a ZVT, I, I believe. So we might be in for a wait for a little bit, unfortunately. We'll see. So there you have it. We do have one semifinals done. The round of eight still going on. And after that, the winner of Bioways versus Quanta is going on to fight Spirit. So guys, give me just a moment uh, as I wait for games. Okay, so I'm just going to update this. Winner of BioAce versus Quanta against Spirit. So I just need a moment, guys. I'm going to refill some coffee here. How the hell is this going to fit? All right, whatever. And this is what we will have. That's a little scuff, but whatever. So bear with me here.
Well, folks, what we wait? Let me put on some music at least. What are we going to put on here? Bada bing, bada boom. Just in case. I should have done that before. I got an idea. So bear with me. Unfortunately, we are waiting on a what seems to be a really long ZVT. I doubt these guys have uh, match history on. So I have no idea the results. Let's see if I got something. Sniper Star League, what's up? Oh. Well, it's going to be Trigger in the final still, though. There could be an upset. We'll see. You got them tournament blues? <laughs> How are you guys doing? It's too bad we didn't have Steadfast covering this, but he he was up early doing uh, World Team League. Now, after this, I may actually take a break. For a bit ski. Damn, this is there's Quanta and BioWays are still going on. God damn, boys. Bite my shiny metal ass. Number one. We're on probation. Which is no big deal, but you know, I don't really enjoy want to my artwork here with the commands, guys. And number two or three or whatever number we're on. I am the liquor. A big mustard tiger? All I did was call him a mustard tiger. Great. Easy. He has got himself a good old yeehaw coming right on in. Excellent. And now he's going to reap his what, pound Dale? of flesh. Have a shout out tremendous here, huh? skill. Hey, Dave, where'd you learn in that build? I was to guess it'd be Princeton University. Done spam commands. Oh, it did work. <laughs>
All right, guys. Unfortunately, we're waiting still, but this has got to be... What sucks is this has got to be a banger of a series. These guys are playing it out really strong. Winds of shit are in the air. Huh? That was one energetic cock. Indeed, hybrid swarmy. A big monster tiger? I'm going to be timed oh, out by my own call mods. A monster tiger. We got the old commands, too. You don't know the power of the Dark Shrine. Prince Tom University. Sweet, we're over. GT or not, there is no Colossus. Imagine Protoss. Imagine Zerg. Imagine Terran. All right, guys, I'm trying to keep you here, but, you know, it's kind of rough when we're waiting on games, but this is the lower bracket semifinals. We'll know who is advancing pretty soon. Can Trigger beat Spirit is the likely outcome. That's going to be the thing. Or is Spirit going to go down? That would be... That would be it. That is the question. This game can't go on too much longer, right? Still, the fact that we went this far in the tournament is pretty crazy. We'll see. Bite my shiny metal ass. Well, fuck it. I guess we're waiting. Still. I'm not going to rush it. Because... We're just going to all be anticipating this. Exactly. <laughs> Get the popcorn of just chatting. <clears throat> Did I get a message? Well... Damn, I could have laddered in this time. Oh, yeah, Spirit played great, and uh, Katowice agreed. He definitely put on some great series. What a damn set of upset sets, though. It was still a banger tournament, let's be real. As sad as it was for many of our favorite players, definitely a really cool outcome, nonetheless. What is he doing? Terrans be happy. Zergs be sad. Protoss happy. We made it to a round of four. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
All right. We had a Protoss in the round of four, at least. Definitely a lot of upsets around two, but we got a clip. I could pull it up, I guess. All right, fine. I'll, I'll pull the clip up. Uh, let me. All right, we're going to wait for a second while, while we're waiting. Yeah, I was. I remember that. That was a sick game. Poor Jean, getting bodied. Look at this kid. And a Roddy Artosis cast at that. Yeah, that was a crazy game. Let me keep it. Thank you for that, Senju. So we did have a little bit of filler there. All right, looks like we may have an outcome. Bio Ice one. So it's Bio Ice versus Spirit. All right, one of my Psy Storm gaming dudes. So we got games. So Quanta did make it to the semifinals. It was a 2-1. We finally have a <laughs> we finally have a series, guys. It is the lower bracket semifinals. And these guys should be getting vetoes in. I'd imagine BioAce is gonna be tired. And I just said, your poor hands. Thank you for playing. I'm sure Quanta's happy with those results. Quanta and uh, everybody else that's in. I just messaged BioAce, your poor hands. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe how most of the tournament went through pretty quickly. All right. The first series I covered was the only long one we've had so far, really. And it wasn't even that long. Uh, some pretty mid game ish stuff from Trigger and Rattata. I always 2-0-ing Trifax. Dude, that's crazy. Patty Mac 2-0-ing uh, Aristori was an interesting result, too. Ma poor Maple's getting... Uh, getting Spirit just into... the round of 16. Taking a game off of in a macro game, though. I really want to see those replays. But here we go. It is Spirit versus BioIce. BioIce versus Spirit in our next game. Finally, we have a series. Little TVZ for you. Can BioIce get an upset here? That's the question. This is definitely going to be a banger. A uh, true uh, finesse, though. There was a lot of money that definitely won in that and Katowice, regardless. Uh, everybody making it to the round of eight, uh, especially. And I think that was just a very solid tournament overall. All right, here we are. Without further ado, Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Babylon. Give it up for Kitesy Gaming's Spirit. And his opponent in the upper left, representing Psystorm Gaming in the red. 
Give it up for BioIce. Got a little TVZ series for us. And let's see what these guys are up to. Poor four Jumi earlier getting bullied. And we'll see what happens. All right, it's going to be a 16 hatch from Bio Ice. Yeah, it's going to be a standard opener from both, I have a feeling. We'll see, though. No proxy racks from Spirit in this game. But it is a TVZ. Go, Jack Sniper. Stevie J, I love Rainer and Maru and all those guys. Guess it was time's time, and he deserved it this year. Oliveira played it really well. <laughs> big true. He, he, honestly, that was some big upsets, but he, he did play incredibly well. I think everybody played really well, and there's, you know, it's, it's a live tournament. Nerves go on. I, I don't envy buddy, players in those situations. At the same time, on the positive, like you guys mentioned, they all uh, took back some good money, at least, and did have good runs, regardless if they're feeling sad about it. I think they played it all really well. At Showtime as well, for that matter. You know, it's unlucky on some spots. Creator was a, another sad one. Damn close uh, outcome there. But we had some surprising uh, results, too, even from uh, earlier on. I mean, just I was expecting Scarlet to be in. Uh, unluckily, not the case. Ooh, okay, Reaper going to get some damage done, maybe. But by always with a good setup, is the Reaper going to go down? Damn close to losing the Reaper. Queens are not out yet, so it's still going to survive. He's going to scout the third base. Uh, that's about it. Just keeping some pressure, keeping some scouting. Metabolic boost is on the way, and we do have more droning from BioWise. Just very standard stuff. It looks like it was just that. Let's see what build it is from Spirit. Spirit does, at least in the past, has liked his Banshees. Let's see what this is. Yeah, he's going to have a Hellion, so I'm wondering if this is going to be a 3cc Banshee opener. And we'll find out. Just speculation. It could be a lot of things. Here's their tech lab. Ooh, Reaper actually just being annoying, but not really doing much more than that. The important thing is Spirit has not lost the Reaper. All right, Starport's going to finish. Here's the moment of truth. It is going to be very likely a Banshee opener. We're at Mr. Spirit. We've got our first couple Hellions coming out. Cloak is on the way for our Terran player. And we'll see what happens. And you know something, guys, too? Something to point out in major tournaments, especially in premier tournaments, uh, the most. Especially in Katowice, the biggest tournament we got left. Or had left. We'll see what happens this year. You know, it's just a lot of pressure. Other than the spotlight, too. But someday it's... Sometimes it's just unlucky. People have bad days. Pro players have bad days. We all have bad days. We're all human, and I think that just can have a that can have a factor too. You could be not feeling good, you know, just having a rough day, and that can affect a lot of things. Even in these tournaments, it's why we see some pretty big upsets sometimes. I'm actually shocked we didn't see uh, Geralt here in the semifinals. He usually makes it at least to the round of eight, and I don't think. He may have... I don't believe he made it to the round of eight this one, even. But these things happen. All right, we do have Cloak going for the Banshee. Uh, some drones going down. He does catch three, maybe four, but he has to be careful. The Spore Crawler is going to finish. So the Banshee is revealed. Six drones. Damn, that's uh, some good work from Spirit. He is going for that third CC. More Hellions in production. And he's just chilling back. Second, that's only with one Banshee, by the way. Usually people push out with two. 
Spirit went out earlier with just the one cloaked banshee. And the other one just kind of chilling back at home. It's going to be a contingent of the army. Carapace on the way for Bioice. He did. He's going double Evo before Lair. Uh, but is okay just now starting melee plus one we do have an armory on the way and uh yeah so far stem is just being researched and our first ebay armory before ebay so interesting i think we might see we're probably gonna see a hellbat push this is kind of cool out of spirit so he's got a hellbat follow-up and this could be very rough for uh bio ice he doesn't have banelings does have a decent queen count and without banelings if you're going ling bane this is going to be a nasty timing with two Banshees, uh, some Marines, and Stim. And then just two racks production behind it. Well, an additional two racks. Being a regular 3 one one after. This is going to be a nasty push. There's a lot of Queens, though, and a lot of Transfuses. But the Stim Marine is going to add some extra punch. The fight, granted, there's no Medivacs, consequentially. But the Banshees actually adding some additional damage. Actually, I don't know. This is going pretty well for Bio Ace. He does clean up a lot of this. It's just a lot of queens. Though the trades, we're looking a little bit in favor of our Zerg player. Did we lose both Banshees? Yeah, three Banshees actually fell this game. So Bio Ace did pretty well. He's just now finished his fourth hatch. But that was a sick hold, honestly. This is a 3cc Terran. However, the two other racks going to finish up just now. Combat Shield's on the way. And there is a decent amount of units, but BioAce is taking the lead. It's just pure links. Carapace finished melee, plus one, not quite there. He's trying to clump up. Oh, no, that's not the fight he wants. See, good surround, though. Does he at least clean up the bio and the other Hellion? If he does, he has a good... Yeah, he does get a good shot at getting some damage. Does he kill the tank? No, I think the repair is just going to come in clutch. BioAce trying to find more value. He's going to be able to attack the third base. Very good play for BioAce. And does he even have... Yeah, he did get a layer. Uh, not starting up his additional upgrades, taking another hatch. I do like that. Bioice likes these kind of assaults. I'm just surprised he didn't get a Baneling Nest, even. Liberator's going to push. And uh, Lynx can't do much against Liberators, but these 1 1 Zerglings are just wreaking havoc. Oh my god, Bioice has done it. He's taken a game off of Spirit. Wow, that was sick. If Bio always beats uh, Spirit, this would be... That would be a big upset, to say the least. But Bio always is a very underrated Zerg player. I'm sorry. I've covered him doing a lot of things. And smaller tournaments, man. People underrate him. I hope we get some bigger players. Maybe we get some bigger prize pools to lure him in. Maybe do a double elimination. Uh Roddy, Roddy keeps adding conditions, but Roddy said he's going to play in some, too. He's like, you know, I might actually be able to do something in these. I hope my buddy Mr. Roddy does play in some. That would be sick for the sake of fun. Maybe we can convince him to throw on a cheeky little cast, too, after he plays. If he's feeling it. He's always welcome, of course, but fortunately, I am... Out of work, guys. If you got an extra sub laying around here, you know, you got Amazon Prime, got a few dollar dues, you can help the Dave out too, you know. Hacking Dave, screwing up things, and I'm waiting to hear back on the start of this one job. So I think I'm going to be applying all over the place this week. <laughs> Fucking crazy game one. Absolutely crazy. I was not expecting that. I don't know about you, chat. And something to know, one of the wild things about Spirit, we had all these players, uh, what was it? Was it two years ago now? A year and a half ago? I don't know. I had a $1,000 Wings of Liberty tournament, which we used with the original Wings of Liberty patch. Not the beta. Uh, with a mod. And funnily enough, Spirit, as young as he is, he won the whole damn thing against players that had been playing, you know, that started with it. It started since Brood War. I uh, mean, for, for the pro players at the time. Anyway, spawning in the upper left hand corner of Dragon Scales, representing Kitesy Gaming in the blue. Give it up for Spirit. 
And his opponent in the bottom, right up a point, representing Psystorm Gaming. Give it up for Bioace. And thank you for the follow, Dynamite Chill. Wardy had his tournament going on. Maybe that's why Max Pax didn't come. Max Pax usually plays in mine. Every so often, we'll get in a che uh, cheeky Estrella show up. He did win one of my tournaments here recently, in the last month or two. You know, actually, you know, it depends. Uh, it depends on the time. Uh, Solar might actually make an appearance here, I hope. You never know who's going to play. So we'll see what happens. But there are more tournaments to come, more events to come. If I get Roddy to play, I'll be jealous. Bro, he said he's looking to play in some smaller tournaments sometimes. It just has to be at the right time. And he said double elimination. I might cheek in a double elimination one. But if we can get a prize pool of at least $300, $400, I think that would be worth a double elimination. And even if it's a few bucks on, on prizes, I do like to pay out the top eight at least on some. If we get to 500 more, we'll do top 16. Yeah, it's not the biggest, you know, first place prize and stuff. Actually, I was thinking of adjusting the, the prize pool on these two because it keeps keeps the game alive. Just maybe notch down first and second percentage is a bit and the next one possibly if we're over 200. Dynamite Chili, I'm sorry. You know, I am a big fan of Chili, so... <laughs> I misread your name. All right, Spirit trying to get a block, but guess what? The Reaper's not going to make there in time. So at least gets a scout on where the third base is, and the fact that there is a third base, it's not a two base LN from Bio Ace. I'm still wrapping my head around that win before, but uh, Bio Ace has got to be feeling pretty good. We're taking the first game. And honestly, Quanta was probably sweating it off playing against this guy. They had a three-game series that seemed to last longer than any series in the tournament, which unfortunately was not covered. But we'll see. Guys, do you like my scuff, the Dave Testa Open that I did literally like half an hour before the tournament with that fancy-ass text, you know? <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm going to start working on graphics for tournaments. We do have the lovely Chicken Man Testa open one when we have our... I'm hoping we get a Chicken Man Testa open again. It's going to be a 3cc build. A uh, third cc before the star port this time. From Spirit. Bio Ice with another standard opener as well. Uh, he wasn't really rushing metabolic, obviously. Went for a pretty quick third hatch. And uh, that's about it. So curious to see the play this one. Is it going to be more Banshee play? Definitely a little bit different climbing out of Spirit. He's going for a super fast third. Uh, Reaper is poking around. Not going to be able to get in here. But the Queens are moving out of position. And uh, we do have a Hellion joining the freight. Both Hellions coming in. Queen. Ooh. Queens are out of position a bit. Getting some creep spread. And nope. I thought there was going to be an eject. But yeah, two more Queens and more Lings coming. The two drones. What are they doing? Oh, no. Bio, I stopped paying attention. Is going to lose both drones. Hello, Dave, not paying attention. Oh, man. Score goes down. It's like overbidding. The job you don't want, exactly. You need that crockpot chili recipe? I've been not even doing it in the crock lately, but I can actually get that later. I might take a little break after this tournament, actually, because I think we're going to do... I'm going to try to get some replays, but I have a feeling there's a lot of players that are asleep. I might be able to get some... So we can get some of the matches that weren't casted, which I'm, I really want to see Maples and Spirit. Uh, Maples taking a game off Spirit's pretty based. Uh, as well as some others. In fact, I might put the, push this around for a recast of the tournament. So hopefully we can get some other casters that are more exciting than Mr. Dave here. You know? I'm not really full of puns today. I'm more full of shit. 
Anyway, this is going to be a lot of Banshee. Uh, a lot of Banshees. A lot of Hellions coming, but we are going to have Cloak Banshees again. For Spirit, not surprising, but the 3cc build. This time he's going for double eBay. It's looking like a standard 3cc build. Uh, more so the two Banshees pushing out. This is more of the timing you'd normally see with Banshee play. That last game was a little, little brazen. He did get some earlier drone kills, but I don't know. Hey, welcome, Pashka. I mean, Sniper, you're welcome to cast on my tournaments, too. I know you're looking for casters. I can try to cast on some of yours. I'm not blowing you off by any means. I'll cast things if I have time. But sometimes I, uh, you know, I do like the ladder and stuff, too. And, you know, my contingent of DGENs does like Dave Ladder's streams. And I do, I play as, I played more games than Rattata. And I'm still Diamond League. It's amazing. But now I'm like, we're switching to Terran, boys. Anyway. Some good Banshee pressure on the fourth base. Is maybe going to force a cancel. The Queens are out of position. One of them is out of cloak. Yeah, Rattata, or fifth base, rather. That's going to be a kill, not a cancel. Bio Ice, I said Rattata, but Bio Ice is going to have to cancel. He's going to try to retake it again, but I don't think that's the play. Yeah, that just cost him money. He shouldn't have tried to retake it right off the rip with nothing there to defend. Carapace is started for uh, Bio Ice again. But melee is not quite done yet. It's just pretty much the same build as before. Yeah, a little delayed uh, melee because of when he saturates the gas and just the amount of money. That was a little a uh, bit of a nuisance from Spirit. Ooh, Bioa is going for a macro hatch. He's spending that money getting that production. There's going to be a Stim Marine push with a 1-1 one -one timing. Combat shields well on the way. Uh, armory on the way too, so this is going to become Hellbat. So it's going to be a Hellbat Marine push possibly, but realistically, this may not time out for combat shields. We'll see. Is this going to be scouted? No, it's going to push before the armory, before the combat shields. But the longer this goes on, the more it could be a problem. And guess what? Carapace isn't done either. So the 1-1 one -one is going to be a bit of a problem. Plus one weapons did finish before armor. But yeah, that's going to be rough. This could be the timing that Spirit was looking for. GG is called. Spirit taking game number two. Winner goes on to fight Trigger in the finals. Very good stuff. Excuse me. Yeah, just uh, feel free. Hit me up if you see an event. Hit me up before two. I can try to announce the stream, but welcome to hop on you can always throw yourself up on uh, teamliquid.net too uh but yeah and we do have a russian cast of this too uh indie starcraft was a little tied up but we were gonna have a polish cast as well i could have got florencio in on this as well too i uh didn't think he'd be streaming it looks like florencio is on shit We can ask him if he wants to cast the Grand Finals with me. It looks like he's not feeling well. I probably will pass if he's sick. All right, here we go. Moving on to game number three. Winner advances onto the Finals. It's possible BioWays could take it. It's possible. If BioWays beats Spirit, that would be a huge upset. Um, and I'm not sure who Trigger would rather be fighting in the finals. So we'll see what happens. All right. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Neo Humanity. Most Terran-favored map, Kappa. It is. Representing Kitesy Gaming, it is Spirit in the blue and his opponent in the upper left representing Sidestorm Gaming in the red it is Bioice I say that I gotta troll my buddy Omni Skeptic my friend for a long time used to be on my team of Team Legion back in the day 
Uh, Omni Skeptic made this in, and I'm very proud of him, but it's the most anti cannon rush map. You got like lots of, uh, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, I like the, the features with the uh, rocks that can trap the army or the, the debris, and they become rocks on the sides. It has a lot of cool stuff. The gold, you know, I hate slow field zones, but it just makes the map all the cheek here. And we do like cheeky maps, but the play on this, as a Protoss player anyway, it's a little rough. I feel like Zerg might be a little disadvantaged, too. There's a lot of cheeky tank spots. Well, I mean, not really. Actually, there's a little bit of... It, it, it's a little balanced in some ways. How you doing, Judgment? Welcome, welcome. All right. Got Z gas going down, spawning pool to follow. It's looking pretty standard so far. Spirit is going for a Reaper expand again. We're going to see more of the same. I'm surprised Spirit's not going to cheek it out and pull the old uh, the old proxy racks twist to game three. Spirit does some cheeky stuff from time to time. Not too often, but uh, in these tournaments anyway. But we'll see. Uh, also, there's going to be a lot of players getting OSC points for the OSC uh, eSports events. Plenty of prizes going around. And the lowest or the highest ranking non-member of OSC is going to get a month free pass. So there's other prizes other than the money. This does help out with OSC rankings. I forgot to mention that. If you want to check out OSC, exclamation mark OSC. It's the online sports championship, formerly Oceanic Sports Championship. Uh, Eddie puts that on Eddie StarCraft. Very good guy, very good tournament organization. And this is a partnered tournament. All right, reactor going down on the barracks. We'll see what happens here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be looking like probably a Banshee build again with a 3cc. Uh, that stim. Uh, interestingly enough, the Banshee opener didn't really. Get, it did get a bunch. It did annoy the hell out of BioAge, forcing two cancels on a hatch. I think he shouldn't have tried again. Uh, but at the same time, it was the stim marine alien push. That did the trick, and then with the armory finishing up, that was one quick Zerg. It was an anti-timing for the 1-1 one, one for Bioice. If his 1-1 one, one finished, or even if his plus one Carapace finished there, I think he had a shot of taking that with the Zerglings, but no Baneling Nest play is a little ballsy. All right, Bioice trying to find some uh, damage, or at least get some information. But he's going to retreat with his Lings, which I don't hate. Reaper's still out on the map. The Queen's going to deflect. The Ling's going to chase it down with Metabolic Boost. And are at least going to deflect the Reaper back from it. The two Hellions going to go join the Reaper. And we are seeing more reinforcing Hellions. That said, it is going to be a Cloak Banshee build again. From Spirit. Alright, are we going to see any gold base mining out? Or we'll, we'll see here. What is going on? No real scout from BioAce. He usually does this, even in PvZ sometimes. He usually has his overlords in a similar place, uh, similar scouting location. And I really think if he got a read on this, he could prepare a little better for uh, the Cloak Banshee build. Okay, Bioice is going to take the 9, 10 o'clock-ish base over here, and we'll see. You're drafting your lesser letter of resignation judgment? Uh, I'm not sure. And I don't know if I'm going to be drinking tonight. We'll see, Rigatron. Uh, I was planning on laddering right after this, but I might take a bit of a break. We might, uh, we may raid out. We will see what happens. If that's the case, I'll be losing the delay, of course. Alright, some good catches here. 
and we'll see what happens. All right, nice start around with the or nice little pressure with the Hellions and stuff, but Bio Oasis is not going to be pushed into just yet, which is probably a safe play from Spirit. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens from here. I like that Spirit's getting a bunker down here just to be a little defensive. He has one one on the way. Bio is going for Baneling Nest before. Yeah, the Baneling Nest is a smart move of the layer here, so he can't get centrifugal hooks. Uh, gas looking pretty good for him. The Banshee's getting deflected. Did get four drones. Actually, let's take a look. A little wing run by attempted, but the bunker is going to finish. So, uh, not the greatest trade. Catches a couple SCVs. That's about it. Decent creep spread. Banshee getting more work done. Unfortunately, the queen injecting for a minute. A couple more drones going to fall. And we don't have an overseer just yet. So, we have 1-1 one, one and centrifugal hooks on the way for Bioace. And I think it's really smart for him to go uh, into this. All right. It was a swap over to a marine tank push for... Spirit, who is on to five racks now. Getting a couple more reactors on here, so he's going to go for heavy marine production. It's going to be a lot of marine tank medevac. Uh, but his Spirit just going to push out with a 1-1 one -one timing again. And combat shields this time with tanks. It's going to be scary for Bioice. He's got a bunch of lings in production. Uh, trying to get that creep spread out. But we'll see. Uh, army supplies looking pretty good for Spirit right now, though. So this is going to be a massive push. And with once Medivacs join this, which they'll be coming out soon, it's going to be scary. Nice siege position. This is what I was talking about about this map. It's the Terran Cabal, folks. Oh my gosh, beautiful attack from Bioice coming from a flank. Get in a nice surround on some of this. The Hellbat's going to be a bit of a problem for the Lings, though, on the other side. Ling's kind of chiseling away, cleaning it all up. The Banshee coming behind this is pretty nice. We don't have any Overseers. Wouldn't hate to see an Overseer come through. Bioice is mining this out, taking another base over here. Do like that, and a fourth base coming down from Spirit's pretty good. Spirit's just pumping out reinforcements. A couple Medivacs means this is now a scarier push. Four Medivacs, actually. Bioice going to try to get some reinforcements. Centrifugal hooks has finished, and we're seeing more Banes in production, so I like that this game. There are some Banelings. There's no tank in the third. Actually, the tank's just coming back over here. He's going to force a cancel in the fourth base. bio -Ace coming in hot. Really good defense from Spirit, though. Look at this Sim City. Like, this makes it really hard to bust into here for bio -Ace. but bio -Ace is playing count with some good counter aggression. I do like this. Oh, he's going to be a nasty three medevac drop from Spirit. Or is he just going to go try to catch stuff on the side? Uh, this will be scouted most likely by Bioice, though. However, uh, okay, he's seeing that this is not mined out, so he doesn't have a way to attack into the natural. Sensor tower's down, and a, well, another factory coming. 4CC going down in the natural, a little safer this time. Oh, Baneling's getting target fired by Spirit. Decent surround from Bioice, but... Still. Oh my gosh, he scouted this, but he didn't see it, I don't think. He didn't pay any attention to that. That's very unlucky. Bioice is going to try to be really aggressive. He just wants to get a kill here. This Bioice going with the main base to the main base with these lings. That can be pretty big. He's getting all sorts of damage, but a huge triple medevac drop making its way in to kill the lair. They're probably gonna deny the Evos too. One one did finish for Bioice, but he has two two on the way. Uh, Bioice needs reinforcements here. He got a lot of work done, but this could be like a lot of return damage. Killing the layer was big. We don't see another layer in production. We have another hatch going down though, and this army's all choked up. No banelings. Spirit getting some good damage, and the queens are actually blocking the ling reinforcements. Queen's not getting transfused. GG, I don't think he needed to per se, but still. Actually, yeah, the army supply was pretty low. Still, it's six series. Spirit takes it in a 2-1. So Spirit has advanced. Damn. GG's. Very good stuff. So it is going to be Spirit versus Trigger. Or the grand finals here.
I always actually played really well. But a sick, uh, that was a sick uh, end of the series right there. So we do have a PVT finals. And we'll see here. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we're just going to see what's going on if we got vetoes. Are we going to see an upset here? Trigger is quite good. It's possible. Or is Spirit going to take it into number one spot? Zerg scum, yeah, nerf Zerglings. Well, Marines OP, Terran map, Terran win. Well, we'll see. See if we can get Mr. Trigger coming in. It's up to Trigger. And here we go. We're on to our first game of this series. All Canadian final denied. You were hoping for Maples. Oh, wow. You're like, nah, no Maples versus Trigger. Or other people. I did reach out to a lot of players for this, but, you know, not everybody can make it. Okay, so yeah, Nicarak made it to the round of eight. Orjumi made it to the round of eight. Quanta make it made it to the round of eight. And Patty Mac made it to the round of eight. Actually taking a game off trigger too. Some upsets. Maple's taking a game off Spirit, at least, but he, unfortunately he had to have Spirit right there. Forjumi also a little unlucky. Quanta two wanting Geralt, though. That was a bit of an upset. And by the way, I'm not surprised at ZVZ for going on there. This is the best of five finals, folks. Here we go, spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Gressvan in the blue. Give it up for Kitesy Gaming's Spirit. And his opponent in the bottom right, representing Basilisk Gaming. He's red, he's Canadian. Or is he Korean-Canadian? It is Trigger. Oh, Canada. Let's see what happens here with Trigger. He's looking for a proxy rack. It's not a bad idea. And Spirit is just going barracks first. But it is a pylon scout nonetheless. Yeah, he's still looking around for proxies. I think Trigger should just go across the map, though, and get some harassed at this point. At those points, it's looking like an unlucky, unlucky proxy. Unless Trigger was going for a proxy himself, which happens from time to time. And this is a best of five finals. These guys vetoed for a best of three. I'll be like, dudes. Dudes. Ah, uh, Trigger doing some good harass, but his probe is in danger. He is going to be forced to retreat. Still does force a little bit of a delay on the barracks. So it is going to be a Reaper expand, most likely from uh, Spirit. We'll see. He might go Reactor first. Oh, Marine first. Okay. Trigger coming back with the probe. Uh, not fully getting it because he has to do some macroing. But yeah, a little RNG not in his favor. So he doesn't get a delay on that so far. Trying to regen some shields for another point of attack. It'd be a bit of a nuisance. The Marine is out though. And Trigger is certainly going to lose this probe if he hangs around. Yeah, he's going to want to run it right away. And he may... Oh, nope. Trigger's not paying attention. He's debating the Marine. All right, second pylon's finished. The Adept 
He's going to start after the supply block and trigger is going to return home. Spirit looking for a proxy over here. It's just a really aggressive probe. It's going to be probably a 1-1-1 from Mr. Spirit. We'll see. Spirit do like his widow mines. All right, a depth stalker opener from Mr. Trigger. I'm kind of curious to see what his build is going to be. Maybe he's going to adapt a little, but it is so far still one gate. Not too uncommon. Okay, he's going in for his twilight first. I'm going to see another gateway go down and trigger. Not really set up for a full wall over here. You can still get some uh, alien defense there too. Okay, it is going to be a tech lab follow-up for Spirit. He could even go Banshees. He does, he does open with Banshees sometimes even against Protoss. The mana is a fan of Banshees as well, but... We'll see. If it's going to be a pretty big two-base push... Is it just going to be some harass? Is he trying to get some uh, game-ending damage a little earlier? Oh, Adept Shade is not canceled. Probably would have liked the cancel there, but Trigger wanted to get some information. Uh, is going to continue to try to aggress with the Shade. No, he's not going to make his way in there. And the Adept isn't continuing to run back. Okay, Spirit finally disengages. Trigger is going to go back. A little dance over here. It is going to be a blink opener from Trigger. We kind of figured as much, but... No, no, okay, it's just going to be another gate going down, so he's just going two gate blink into a fast third base, which could be kind of risky against these builds if it's a marine tank push with a medevac, and that's the case. It's likely to be the case. Spirit could be pretty aggressive. He has a good amount of marines, and Trigger doesn't fully know what he's up against yet. Four gate blink could be pretty good against this stuff, but that, we're just playing a little bit of a macro game, so... These pushes can be a little harder to hold. Spirit trying to buy time with the Adept. He only has another Stalker. No shield battery. And there it is. It's going to be a Cloak Banshee Marine tank push. Did I not call it, chat? There is an Observer coming out, though. The tank getting escorted with the Medivac. The Afterburner, I don't think, was scouted. If he did see that with the Shade. Uh, that would be pretty clutch. But this might force the cancel on the third. Messing with Trigger's build. Tank getting a lot of damage here, and the Stalkers can't engage yet. So Blink is a ways away. He's trying to buy Imagine time. Terror. I think this is going to be a force cancel on the third trigger. Trying to jump on top of this tank, but there's still going to be a lot of bio. Stim is not a factor here, but at the same time, there's also not a shield battery at the natural. Would have liked to have seen a shield battery so he can keep these Stalkers alive. Blink's going to be coming up here soon, but one Stalker looks like it's going to fall. And Spirit going to go right into the main? Hello? All right, these Cloak Banshees are starting to make their way across the map. First one is out. Second one on in the way in production. I thought there were two. Uh, Observer going out. And Trigger is going into an Immortal. He's expecting more of a push or a different push. And this Observer is going to be needed for the Banshee. The Banshee, after all that pressure, can certainly cause some serious dam damage. I don't hate an Observer going out, but the fact that there's an Immortal follow-up. And Immortals don't do that great against Marines. Oh, Cloak's activated. Trigger is going to have to recall this Observer, probably. Or he's going to have to move these probes around. He's trying to do whatever micro he can. And with this... Oh, my gosh. There's a little push for distraction in the front. But guess what? The Marines dropping into the third base are going to be a bit of a problem for Trigger. And they're going to go right into the main. 12 workers fall on the Banshee. Uh, cleans up. Yeah, Banshee's cleaning house. Trigger pulled workers down to his 30s. Has to pull some from the main. Great multi-prong attack with few units from spirit oh no triggers getting picked apart on the flank too there are a couple of banshees now not a lot of stalkers right here because trigger has to clean up the main base too he's doing a good job of keeping his workers alive all things considered because it's kind of a little bit of how the build went third cc going down for spirit his stem's about to finish with his plus one in combat shield so it's just a standard 3-1-1 follow-up a lot of marauders out trigger doesn't really have any power units or tech behind this he's been doing a good job of surviving but he's not really oh actually i take that back he has a colossi on the way no charge follow-up i hope trigger remembers to get charged with this but at the same time he's not been able to mine all that lost mining time is really going to impact his game we'll see what happens here Gifts are still on? Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, I probably should have not had him on for this. But, you know, it adds it adds character, you know? I 
I like to throw you guys off sometimes and just let you know what's what here. Oh my goodness. Uh, Colossi actually coming in clutch. Even though there's enough Marauders to do this, I like that there was an, an overextension from Spirit. Trigger actually defended that pretty well. His defense has been good, all things considered. And he is going into charge and extended Thermal Lance. We do have a Forge even from Trigger. Let's heck it go. He isn't behind on this. I wouldn't hate it if he started plus one ground weapons. Um, just from how this is going. Uh, that said, plus one infantry armors on the way. Yeah, he's going for ground weapons in this case. Because Trigger's not going for a, a charge a lot kind of build. Four Marauders with two Medivacs pushing into the natural. Trigger is camping by his third. Okay. I think he's on this. He's on this trigger. He's seeing this. Yeah, he blinks forward a bit. It's just stalkers and some are damage against the Marauders, but he does get a lot of damage on the Medivac. There's going to be another drop going to the main. It is scouted, but there's not a lot of units. Charge hasn't completed just yet. Trigger out of position again. Widow mines with Marauders this time. And we don't have an observer right here. This could be a bit of a problem. Meanwhile, the drop returns with the four Marauders in the natural. Yeah, there's an armory too, mind you. Uh, recall is forced. That is the observer on the left side of the map. Charge lot's going to help out a bit more with the stalker uh, than the stalkers, other than for the medevacs. But seven workers fell for trigger. No! Trigger is going to be feeling for a uh, like he wants to get a fourth here eventually, but uh, it's kind of a tough call. Luckily, we don't quite have one yet for Spirit. He is going to go take... Well, okay, it's just a Scouter Supply Depot, but I'm assuming Spirit's going to take one soon is why. Trigger's still got to defend, though. Spirit doing Spirit things. And I think this is going to be a Widow Mine drop again. This Trigger pull his workers. Oh, my God! The target fire from that Widow Mine was sick! Very well done by uh, Spirit. Trigger's now down on workers, and he is going to take his fourth base at the 8 o'clock position. Damn, that had to hurt. Trigger did a smart move in pulling the Zealots. He didn't want to lose his workers, but when they clumped up, the Widow Mine was in range, and that was definitely a target fire from Spirit. Hmm. Oh my goodness, Ghost Academy's out too, and another eBay with plus two coming for Spirit. Trigger going into plus two ground weapons. He's getting out Immortals. I think he should be getting out some Disruptors with this army. I mean, I guess he's not... He's uh, thinking Spirit's just going to over-split him. But I really don't like Immortals at the stage of the game against Terran. And while well, Trigger's going for a little bit of a... Oh, this is going to be unlucky for Trigger. It's going to be found, and not a lot of damage is going to be done. The Marauders and EMPs doing a good job of pulling this up. Uh, Trigger might as well have fought some of this. He picked off a few units at least, but that's going to be a lot of Zealots for nothing. And he's so far behind. He's trying to get a fourth base. The Zealots just buying time, I guess, but that is an expensive bit of buying time. We are going to see a Disruptor in production for Trigger, but I just don't think this is going to do it. There's a lot of Vikings, five, six Vikings, and a very... Uh, Colossi Heavy Army Trigger just has the Stalkers he had warped in previously. Spirit knows where Trigger's expanding. He in, Well, he anticipated. I'm not sure if he saw that with his scout. Ghost coming in. That is one dead observer, I'm sure of it. Trigger's forced to cancel his base. Spirit even has a Marine here camping to prevent expansion on the 2 o'clock position base. And this is going to be just a drop of the main. Trigger does see this. Is recall available? It is not. There's no energy. The cooldown has been activated. Colossi going to engage the Vikings. It was as quick as he had to go because that's a lot of bio, but he's going to need these Colossi. Two Colossi do fall. Trigger is trying desperately to hold, but he's looking like he's in a rough spot. He's a base behind a Terran, and he's lost so much earlier. He's done a good job teching out of this, and GG's called, though. Spirit just has too much and has done too much damage. Very sick game number one. Or we'd hear that scream. Oh my goodness. All right, as we're on this, I am going to get rid of the gifts for a memento here. 
Sick, sick tournament, though. We could be immortals. Immortals are good and have their purposes, but I just... When you have, like, two immortals, I think your best bet is to go into Disruptors after Colossi. That's your best shot, especially if you're behind. And I am going to get this set up. This time, I'm going to remove the gifts for the commands on here. Anyway, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Altitude in the blue. Give it up for Kaitsi Gaming's Spirit. And his opponent in the upper right, our North American goat himself. Give it up for Basilisk Gaming's Trigger in the red. Disgusting terror. I'm guessing that's what Cloverfield's saying. Yeah, Trigger did have a bank, but he could be. He was getting picked apart. He did a great job at defending, and he did a great job of keeping Spirit back home. But ultimately, that was just too much. Spirit got so much done and, and just incredible multi prong attacks. Not to be unexpected from him. Okay, it's going to be a double gas opener for Trigger. And I'm glad that Trigger's pylon scouting. I'm hoping. Uh, but the thing is, is what's the double gas build going to be? Is it going to be an armory? Is it going to be a really aggressive uh, tank push? We'll see what happens. How you doing, snow pants? <laughs> Dirty, yeah. That was uh, certainly some heavy aggression out of uh, Spirit, but he's got to hand it to him. His Micro is top notch. Spirit, uh, Trigger rather, has been playing quite well this tournament too. And I'm sure he's not feeling horrible. Oh, there, that said, uh, Spirit is up a point. <laughs> it is a best of five, so anything is possible. Let's see if we can get an upset. Trigger has performed many upsets in Dave tournaments. And I love to see this kid uh, develop over time. Spirit's also a young buck, though, too. It's incredible for his age as well. All these kids are uh, really good players here. Incredible game number one still. Let's see if Trigger can go off. Stargate. Depending on the Stargate play, everybody likes their Stargate, but some... Double gas builds are just like build order counters against Stargate, it feels like. Not always. But I think a lot of times Protoss casters even put too much hopium and emphasis on, oh, you know, Phoenixes and whatever. But it's like, it's so tough sometimes. Even Special was commenting, I noticed on uh, twi uh, Twitter to Gemini about, what do I do against the... Uh, against double gas builds and Special. It's like, yo, dude, Stargate openers. I'm like... I don't know, man. I think some of these builds blink do be a little better, but if it's a big push. Let's see. All right, Trigger. Yeah, he's just going to have the one Stargate. We did see uh, this a little earlier, too. And it could be rough. For Jumi versus Spirit. Uh, very similar opener. But... A little different play out of Spirit this game. And no, I'm not talking about the two-gate cannon rush versus Spirit game against what was going to be Turax Reaper. Oh, actually, decent defense from Trigger. Does the Adept win? Yes, it does. Trigger cleans it all the hell up, so there is no worker damage for Spirit. So Trigger looked like he might be going for Phoenix Colossus. Okay, he's going double gas, but is he going for... Okay, he might be just dropping a pylon. No, he's just scouting over here. So good catch from Spirit, uh, from Trigger. Spirit is going for a marine tank push, it looks like. He has a medevac. He's got a viking. He's on the way anyway. Siege tank coming. Oh, Widowmine. I missed this. Hello. Didn't even uh, catch that. Widowmine does get a lot of hull damage. And one of the Phoenixes, Trigger, continuing Phoenix production. And okay, Trigger did decide not to take the second gas so fast. He went for... A third Nexus before Robo. Usually if you do Phoenix Colossus, you're kind of turtling trying to get this out. 
I think I almost would like Phoenix Charge against this play. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Kind of an interesting play from Trigger because it's not the usual timings for Phoenix Colossus and everything. It will check out, but uh, getting that Nexus before things is going to be a little rough. It is still one Rax production for Spirit. He's mustering an army. Uh, he's going to hope to get something done with this medevac. And if anybody can, it's Spirit. The Phoenixes are all pushing out in the front line, hoping to get some value. Getting a SEV and, well, the injured Phoenix is in the front line in harm's way from the Vikings. Still continued Viking production. You do want those for the Phoenixes. Especially for on a 1-1-1 one, one, this long. Two more racks finally coming down for Spirit. Uh, does he have an eBay as well? No. Yeah, I didn't see the eBay in production, so he didn't have one just yet. Third base has finished for Trigger. He's getting an Immortal out, getting the Robo Bay out. The problem is with these Vikings, Phoenix Colossus is not going to be the greatest against a high Viking count. All right. Trigger is trying to take some, uh, get some information here. Is going to have an Observer, but let's look at these army supplies. This is all tied up into phoenixes these are unstem marines but with everything all together this is rough and i do like the fact that there's SEVs with this the big gabe special if you will spirits definitely coming in with a big gabe build here he's going to be able to drop bunkers and turrets making this all the harder in this early third base it's usually why you don't take it in phoenix colossus uh, what's trigger's plan he's going to have to sack the third it's literally why you don't take an early third in this case. It's going to force the supply block and trigger. He's going to use the Phoenixes to pick off reinforcements, trying to get a Colossi. Uh, there's shield battery. He's going to stand for a second, but I'll be honest, it ain't looking the greatest. Just some Adepts and Immortal and a Sentry, and that's all Trigger has to fight with the Colossi. And the way he's going to try to take a third base again in another location. Trigger picking off a Siege Tank behind. So this is three Siege Tanks, over with three Vikings, four Vikings. Uh, there's going to be a Cyclone follow-up for Spirit. Actually, it's canceled. So these units are going to go after the third base. The Vikings are landed. The Colossi, I believe, is out. Yeah, and Vikings are not going to be raised. Trigger going to lose the pylon again. Vikings going to be raised right now, though. And, yeah, Trigger is going to have to cancel this third base. There's no shot of that standing. It is going to cancel, at least, saving the money. Getting another Colossi in production. Getting two more gates. It's just pure gateway units, though. No charge, just slow zealots. The Vikings immediately disintegrated. Siege tanks being picked up is going to help a bit. The Vikings going to get eviscerated by the, uh, or the Phoenix is going to get eviscerated by the Vikings. That said, there's not much else to shoot down. The siege tanks cleaned up. Trigger holds, but at what a cost. There's a third CC finishing up, and uh, Spirit is going to be relentless. Dropping the Vikings, doing. Oh my gosh. Look at the medevac micro, even. Oh, well. Trigger's lost so many units. Another Colossi is coming. All the Vikings are cleaned up. It's going to be a Marine Marauder follow-up with this. Uh, Siege Tank counts eliminated. Trigger looks like he's in a lot of trouble, especially that considering a third CC is done. He has done as much as he could to hold this. He's going to try to find some value. But again, these are slow zealots with this. This is just a small contingent. He wants to buy time, I guess. But this army is just going to be disintegrated. The extended Thermal Lance classes are not going to be a thing. It's just... Literally Colossi. Extended Thermal Lance isn't going to be done for quite some time. And uh, luckily, all the Vikings were cleaned up. Marauder's still a good unit, though. Concussive Shell going to be a factor as well. Uh, did we get combat shields? Yes, we already got combat shields on the Terran side of things. Uh, we'll see what happens here. All right. Good catch. Trigger still with a high adept count from earlier. So those adepts, did he actually warp some in before? Yeah, I think he did because he didn't have charge for so long. He had to make some decisions. Plus one Templar archives coming down. Trigger did manage to get a third base again, but now he knows his opponent's on a third base. Very unlucky, but again, folks, that's usually why you don't get an early third in Phoenix Colossus. Trigger with a good worker count still, though, uh, even though he's not going to be able to take a fourth for a bit. An Adept versus a Marine. Let's go. Oh, the Ghost is out and does land a nasty EMP. A lot of this army did lose a lot of shields. In fact, to the Colossi losing 
about 75% of their shields. Guardian Shield going to come in clutch right here in this engagement spear with the nice micro. Trigger doesn't want to overextend. Charge is going to finish up here. The Warp Prism still stays alive for now. He is going to warp in some more charge lots. All right, let's see what's going on behind this. Plus one finishing up for Trigger eventually, eventually, but plus one infantry armor finishing up for Spirit as well. Oh, man, these EMPs are so good. Killing the remaining energy on the sentry, and most of the charge lots are cleaned up. One of the Colossi taking a bit of damage is going to fall to the tank. Uh, the Archon and Stalkers trying their best here. Some workers falling, but look at the army supply of Spirit. Medivac's doing God's work in healing. Trigger's going to have to try to uh, return with this Colossi here. Spirit's again going back into Viking production. Not a lot of Medivacs, though. And Trigger really needs some miracle work here. He's trying his best to micro this Colossi, forcing a siege on the tank. Trigger is going to spot that. And no, he doesn't want to engage. He's just trying to buy time so he can muster forces. Again, Trigger was unable to take a fourth behind this. He did get some workers, but still Spirit's... Uh, leading on workers even a little bit. So he will be able to take a fourth eventually here. Uh, trigger a little bit of an overextension again. And now that Vikings are out, this is going to be a problem. I do like that there's a Templar Archives. It's going to sound crazy with Ghost, but I really wouldn't hate Storm. Actually, I really wouldn't hate Storm being researched. Spirit has made a transition from Ghosts into Marauders. Uh, funnily enough. And I do believe all the Ghosts were cleaned up. He could always continue production, but Trigger's now going to have to defend, and he's only on three bases. Without Ghost, though, the Archons is going to do good. Trigger trying to get a nice little counterattack over here. And damn. He is on his back foot. Spirit has a massive army. Some of the supplies in the back. Okay, never mind. He did have a Ghost, or two Ghosts left. So that's really going to help Spirit out. Unfortunately, the shield battery is in jeopardy. Battery overtrench trying to hold on by some time. Trigger forced to overextend the extended Thermal Lance Colossi. Warp Prism kind of derping in the front, but the Vikings finally are killed. Trigger is in a lot of trouble here. Uh, even though he was able to save this. Oh, that is some good micro from Trigger. He comes from the back and actually takes out the siege tank. 11 workers fall. Trigger's still in a rough spot, but he's doing as good as he can to stay in this game. Spirit doing a classic move of jumping into the main, but Spirit is able to warp in some Zealots to deflect the Assault. I would like to see him catch some units here. The probes down here are going to scout this before team workers fall. Oh my god, Spirit went for this drop, and I totally missed it. Probe's going to go back to the natural now. Trigger in a rough position. Uh, Spirit is pretty committed on three bases, but obviously economically, he could get a fourth if he wanted to. Trigger's just got to hold on here and try to build up an army, I guess. Because this is looking pretty committed on three bases from Spirit. Yeah, it did retain a lot of units, and his defense has been pretty good. I did miss that push in the Nat. That said, one Marauder versus a Stalker of the Medivac. Actually, funnily enough, Trigger wins that fight. Is going to have ground weapons plus two pretty soon. He's eking out some more High Templar, trying to make some more Archons. It's going to be Archons and Colossi and Charge Lots. With that said, there's still Vikings coming. So, that is a problem for him. He does have a few Vikings. Some of these medevacs are really injured, though. And truthfully, if... Okay, Trigger scouting this is pretty big, but he's got to get in a good position. Nice scan from Spirit, however. Trigger does disengage here. Oh, catches that medevac that had the Marauder, so that's one less medevac. The Marine over here is going to be a bit annoying. Trigger doesn't want to aggressively blink on that for sure. He needs to save his blinks. He needs to save everything. Another Colossi on the way, but it's only one for the moment. Okay, ground um, armor plus one being attempted for Trigger. More ghosts are out. More in production. The spirit looks like he's in a good spot. Well, he's been in a good spot. A nice catch on the siege tank, but Trigger's kind of being a little trigger happy, living up to the name. War Prism trying to help, but the Vikings were targeting it quite a bit. That did force the Vikings to target that instead of the Colossi, which bought Trigger some time. But you know what? I think game number two is decided. Spirit. Queen's house. What a game. What a damn game. We have another one.
Can Trigger come back and really give us an upset here? That's the question. Slow and Fungal can kill him, though. Big uh, Trua. All right, moving on to game number three. Is this going to be a house cleaning or not? That is the question. All right, guys, moving on to the final game, possibly, unless Trigger can do a comeback. So he's getting some good practice, that's for sure, uh, for PBT. We know Trigger's going to be fighting hard this year. And honestly, his improvement cannot be a disagreed. All right, here we go. Potentially about the clean house right here, but we'll see if our boy Spirit can uh, can do it. It is Spirit from Kaiti Gaming in the blue. Wow, what kind of introduction was that? Anyway, and his opponent in the upper left really looking to come back here. Give it up for Trigger in the red on Imagine Dragon tear. Scales. All right. Dragon Scales. Imagine if Dragon Phoenix Gaming renamed their team to Dragon Scales Phoenix Gaming or something. Trigger looking for Proxy Rex in case it was Proxy Barauder in that case. Not a bad idea, but Spirit's uh, going to play it out from his base again. He's looking like he's feeling pretty confident. Hopefully Trigger can give us an upset in game number three. I want to at least see a five-game finals, guys, with, with Trigger and Spirit. Trigger taking a game off Spirit would be based. Maples has done so, so Trigger certainly can. And kudos to Maples on that. How you doing, Don't Defense? Guys, if you're new to this stream, by the way, do appreciate a follow. Trigger getting some good to ass here. We have more tournaments to come. I do grind the ladder. I'm a pretty degenerate person but it's part of the Dave stream you know outside of just uh, casting I do some other things we do have some random shenanigans of all types in my stream all right next is going down adept on its way Corona was on Chrono was on the uh, Nexus, which is fine because it's not a Reaper opener. There's going to be a Reactor Factory file up for Spirit. Another 111 is my guess, but we'll see. Doesn't look like it's going to be 3 Racks Factory or anything. Now, I'm curious to see if Trigger does something like 4Gate Blink this game, which I would hate. He needs to try something, and 4Gate Blink is a good build. Those sometimes build order countered. At the least, yeah, he is going Twilight, but at the least, he definitely needs to try something different against Spirit. Spirit is very aggressive and at the same time always keeps his macro up. Ooh, Trigger almost overextended. Does you bait the Marines back and gets a cancel on the shade, so he doesn't want to throw this away. However, Spirit with five Marines, Trigger's not paying attention. Not like this, Trigger. Ooh, he's going to chisel at the Marine, but yeah, I think that's one dead adept. Trigger not paying attention just for one second because he was dropping another gate. Uh, going into Blink. Yeah, actually, yeah, he's got two gates coming, so it's going to be three gate. I don't hate three gate even. Yeah. Three gate Blink is a little better. You can take an expand uh, a little quicker than four gate Blink. Usually you want it around 530 for four gate Blink, but three gate, he's probably going to have like a 430... Expand. I have no idea what my my MMR is uh, shit here, but that's like basically anybody in the world. 
Well, I've been I've been putting on some pretty good games lately. Some some fun ones. Listen, a lot of the Protoss players from time to time come to watch my stream to learn some builds or get some ideas for tournaments. And the only person I've seen to do some similar lately was Neeb in uh, Katowice in his uh, PVT. <laughs> Base Neeb. Man, I miss Neeb playing in my tournaments. I love that guy. All right, let's see here. Blink is not quite done, and there's going to be a medevac drop with Widowmine's trigger. Is going to have to be paying attention, is he? Trigger does start splitting and pulling the boys, but he has to be careful. No, Trigger, not like this. Okay, nice micro. The other Widow Mine's not landed, and Trigger is going to be in position, but not able to blink back. Unluckily, if he could blink, he would have been able to take that out. One Stalker going to fight that one Widow Mine over there. And actually good defense from Trigger, but a lot of lost mining time. That's all you can really do if you're out of position. And uh, the Widow Mine on cooldown, we do have an Observer. There was an Armory, it looks like. Yeah, this was an Armory Widow Mine drop, so Medivac is still out. Oh my gosh, is Trigger going to do it? Spirit not paying attention loses this, but there's another Widow Mine right here. Trigger scouts it and is going to chase it down. That is another dead. That was actually really good from Trigger. All right, so it is an Armory Widow Mine build, so we're going to see uh, transition to tanks, actually. A Raven, a Marine Tank Raven push. They do a 3 one one Stem getting started. Uh, eBay going down as well. Standard 3-1-1 timing. Trigger with three bases. That was a really good defense from Trigger, though. He's going to go push out with a blink push. Uh, is going to have the Observer eventually. Siege tank not sieged yet. And we do have some swapping of techs for our Terran player. Siege tank is going to go on the tech lab, though. So we're not going to see an immediate uh, transition. And just one Marauder in production. But the tank's going to be the defensive point of interest. Uh, with that said, the Observer's not quite here. The Warp Prism's not quite here. Trigger's going to get a read, and he is going to snipe the Supply Depot and potentially a little more. Oh, Trigger doesn't want to overextend into the tank. Oh, I like the charge follow-up pretty... Yeah, it was a little late, but it was not... It could be worse. The charge follow-up's good from Trigger going into the Forge. He is eating some more tank shots, but hasn't taken hull damage just yet. Stim is not done yet, so Trigger has a little bit more time. Now he should reposition. Okay. Yes, Trigger. All right, go to the natural. Go to the natural, Trigger. He's doing it. He's doing it. This is what we want to see. He's got a warp prism out as well. Spirit's going to go here. He's got to keep Spirit busy. Once Charge goes, he can get use this warp prism as well, keeping pressure on. Trigger saturating his third base behind this. We do have Stem Combat Shields and plus one coming. Stem and Combat Shields going to finish up pretty much in unison. Uh, and Concussive Shell is a follow-up. We got more Marauders in production. Some Widow Mines are going to be damn annoying to deal with. Trigger does have two Observers out. Uh, scouting some of this. And we do have Zelly Boys lined up. There is a Raven here. Oh, the Raven got some damage done, but Trigger warped in some Stalkers. That's why I didn't have enough Warpins right here. It's four gates in production. I do like the plus one armor in this case with a charge a lot attack. Uh, and Trigger is going to YOLO back over here. The Siege Tank still in position. There's a lot of Terran by, although Trigger... If he can get some good warpins, he's going to have a good time. Catches the missile turret. That's pretty big. All right, Spirit's going to do Spirit things, though. It is going to be a Marauder Mine Marine drop. Okay, he's looking to reposture and position trigger. Doesn't have a lot of map awareness, though, on the other side. And it gets Spirit. You need stuff like cheeky pylons over here and here and stuff like that. But trigger is just keeping the pressure on. A lot of Terran players would concede to this and not actually be able to get a drop off with this. And that's one thing to note about Spirit. Oh, is Spirit going to go for his 360? Well, not 360. It's going to be more of a pincer attack. I think he may just do that. Trigger is going to be caught off guard with his Stalkers. And that's a lot of Terran. Widowmine does fall, but a couple Stalkers fall. It's going to be rough. Trigger going in for a charge lot flank. I think that's the play. He's going to try to take a fourth base. He's going for a drop in the main and then pressure on the sides. But Spirit's just going to fully commit and push. Trigger may have to recall. I wouldn't hate a recall here. All right, Trigger's going to tip his hat to the Stalkers, though. He, no, he's just going to return home. The charge lots are going to get what they can. But that said, Trigger does not have any AoE with this build. So it was looking pretty good. He did defend a drop, but I think he's going to lose his third base. And he's going to lose all these probes, probably, because he doesn't feel he can engage this army. The boys pull from Spirit. Oh, no, this is a two-base all-in. Trigger's trying to get some counter damage. Does he recall the boys? Trigger, oh no, not like this. He's not pulling the probes. 
because he's busy microing back on the other side of the map, putting pressure on Spirit. Does he have enough to defend with all these SCVs? Now there's a tank behind this. And that's a decent amount of medevacs, though they've been... They're not very high on energy. The, oh, the Widow Mines! Not like this! What a scrappy game! And that does it! Spirit takes the final game! <laughs> all Thren 7. The Spirit guy seems strong. I bet he could take a map off Maru. Big true. Uh, damn! GG's! And that was it. Woof. Guys, I think I am going to take a bit of a break for some life stuff, some biological functions. So we're probably going to get right out to Mr. Uh, we'll right out to hold it. I will be on a little later for some ladder. A uh, super huge thanks to Showtime for us. Thanks to all the players for playing, and thank you guys for using the Matcherino codes. Let's take a look and see how we did today. Oops. If I could spell. Guys, Holden is an NA Grandmaster. Wow, we had somebody contribute some more money, it looks like. $264. All the codes are 